colors. Hello, seven people ready, waiting for us. Hi everyone, hi everyone. Good evening. Can you guys hear us? Thank you. Turn, the hmm? Turn up the volume on the phone. Can't hear anything. Hello, hello. Let me try and see here, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Hello? It's good. Hi guys, hi, hi, can you hear us? Please let us know in the comments before we start. How is everyone? Good evening. Happy Saturday. Please, can you hear us? Please let us know in the comments. I want to just make sure the phone doesn't fall off again. Hello. Hi, 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 hi. I'm not reading the comments. Stephen, are you already reading the comments? Are they able to hear us? Hello. Good evening. Where are you watching us from? Okay, everybody can hear us. Okay. Okay. Well, we're here. So. I'm trying to connect so that I can read some of the comments. Guys, how are you all doing? How is your Saturday? Happy weekend. How are you spending your weekend? Please let us know where you're watching us from. We are currently in Kampala, Uganda. For those who may be asking, you know, I know most of you have been asking, why are you guys located? Where are you? We are in Uganda. Yes, Kampala. So where are you watching us from? Someone is saying from Sierra Leone. Hi, how is Sierra Leone? New York. Hi. How are New York. Where's New York? Because mm -hmm. a few in New York stand up. I'm part of New York because I grew up in Gramercy Park and uh, spent a ton of time in Brooklyn, uh, right next to the promenade on Pierpont Street. If you're from New York City, you should know exactly where that is. You know where you can find Henry uh, Henry's Cafe, Henry's Diner mm -hmm. on Montague Street, and uh, also. If you walk down the towards the, the bridge to Dumbo, the River Cafe, one of my favorite restaurants in Brooklyn, New York. Um, yeah. That's where you are. <laughs> I love Brooklyn. Hmm? Your friends are right the there. Bronx are in the Bronx is in the house right now. Okay. BX. We got people from Nairobi, from everywhere. Wow. How is Nairobi? Is it cold? I've been in Nairobi in like a week or so. It is kind of chilly there at uh, at night based on where you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Williams is saying he's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> ah, you in Uganda? What are you talking about? Okay, so, so. That is a different Williams. This is not that does not seem Williams. No, no, not Leo. Oh well, sorry, William. I love I love Philly. True story. Uh, when I first got into banking, um, I actually really looked into investing in a place called Minioc in Pennsylvania. I also considered, uh, wow, um, Ellsworth and 7th. My God, my memory, huh? Mm -hmm. um, and I also considered uh, purchasing a few of the small um townhouses near uh i'm blanking near temple university mm -hmm. philadelphia is very close to new york really two hours okay especially on the i-95 the way i used to drive that nissan maxima i think i used to do it in like an hour and 40 minutes or less <laughs> wow, that's the amazing. younger version of me that's amazing someone is watching us Dennis is watching us from Paris. He's one of our moderators and one of our biggest fans. Pali, stand yes. up. Mm -hmm. Someone is saying, his Martin is saying he's Ugandan, watching you from Juba, South Sudan. Wow, I hope everything's okay out there, my brother. Yeah, hope you're safe as well. Indeed. That side. Yeah, he's saying he's from Go on. Mm -hmm. ah. What? Yeah, you see, I was right. Mm -hmm. Ellsworth and Seventh, that's right. I would yeah. In fact, I I um 
True story. You know what happened with that deal? First time I got really disappointed in, uh, in doing business with friends. And remember, I have a fake cousin named, who oh shall remain God. nameless. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> it's okay. So at the time, I was still working. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was still working for Bank of America. No, everybody said they could hear us. I was still working for Bank of America, right? And on the weekend, I actually used to go to Philly all the time. And when I got to, to Ellsworth, because from where Ellsworth is that street, mm -hmm. you could look and see downtown uh, Philadelphia, basically. Mm -hmm. So then I convinced my fake cousin mm -hmm. to come with me. I was like, bro, let's buy this three-story, yeah, uh, nine-bedroom house, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, it needed like maybe like $50,000 worth of um, repairs. And at the time, you know how much that building was going for? Mm -hmm. How much? I think it was like a hundred and ten thousand. Very affordable, you mm -hmm. know. Seriously. But at the time, Ellsworth was kind of still a little bit rough around the edges. But across the track, you could see where things were going. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Kabbalah Gala now, yeah. right? How like it you, was. how it was, yeah. how is you could see the changes the are changes, coming. Yeah, and so I had my part of the money. I was ready to go. And then he flaked on me. That's why he's my fake cousin. That was the beginning. No, of that was fake. the beginning of the fakeness. <laughs> Actually, the beginning of the fakeness is another story I'll share with you guys next time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love Philly. I always wanted to invest heavy mm -hmm. in in Pennsylvania, particularly Philadelphia. Yeah, really? beautiful city. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. But anyway, we're here to talk about farming. Yeah, we're not real estate. Saying, yeah, he's still saying that one day I hope to say that I'm living in Uganda. Well, my brother, when you're ready to come, I will be here, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll definitely be here, bro. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we'll be able to, to welcome you to UG. I'll show you all the safe restaurants to eat without getting the, the, foreign, the foreign belly experience. Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? you know, when you first come, you need to really be careful where you eat. Just like, you yeah, know, true. back in the U.S., they tell you, if you go to Mexico, first, don't drink the water. Hey, why? Because you're going to get sick. What's wrong with that? It's not that there's anything. It's just not the same as the water in the U.S. Okay. Just like the water here is not the same in the U.S. Exactly. That's probably why we, we get, you know, sick, sick for some time. Mm -hmm. So, but some of the restaurants here are really, really awesome. And, um, you know... Since we're on the topic of farming, I want to just start this off, if yeah. you don't mind, right? Okay. So our friend Kenneth, mm -hmm. you know, who we featured on this channel. Yes. Um, he's actually experiencing his kidding season for his pure ball goats. Wow. He's super excited. Congratulations. He's super you. excited. I'm happy for him, I'm right? So, happy for him so like he, he wrote me earlier saying that he's looking for more land. Huh? And <laughs> why is that important, right? It, this actually, um, this actually goes back to what we always talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Many of you out there are truly great supporters of this channel, and we love and appreciate the support that you guys provide us. But by the same token, some of you are paralyzed by overanalyzing the, the landscape before you decide to get into farming. And if you have been with us for some time, you guys have heard on many occasions where I always tell you guys, even if you're not ready to purchase or to get start your farm today, yeah. but the key element you need to get is the land. True. Because like everywhere else around the world, I don't care if you're in Botswana, if you're in Burkina Faso, wherever you are, the price of farming land it's just going through the roof because land is finite, you know? You can't just go in a 3D printer and make new land, formable land anyway, yeah, right? So, so I thought it was interesting, mm -hmm. like somebody that we respect, yeah. who's a genetics farmer like we are, right? And he was like, man, I need more land because he needs to grow his flock, right? <laughs> he has a beautiful setup in Mokono. Yeah, but Mokono land is super expensive. expensive that is true. But you know what he wrote to me, which was so 
incredible. Uh -huh. He's like, Grafton, I'm looking for more land. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. And then the next day he wrote, he said, well, I, I, I'm having a hard time finding cheap land. It's not easy. So not there easy. are so many parts of Uganda you could have gone to mm -hmm. maybe two years ago, maybe three years ago, where you could have purchased one acre of land mm -hmm. for less than a thousand USD. Can you imagine, guys? Can you imagine purchasing one acre of land for 700, 800 USD per acre, right? Okay. Like right now, mm -hmm. he's saying, you know what? I'm hoping to find land for around a thousand dollars. And the first thing I wrote to him, I was like, yeah, so that means, and even before I could write him back, he wrote, but I'm going to have to go so deep so into deep the village. The village. Yes. <laughs> My That's guy is going to have to literally go beyond, he's going to have to go to beyond Gulu, not even Gulu. He's going to have to go to um, closer to where we were in Sinjuru. But even landing in Sinjuru is very expensive. Yeah, that is expensive. Where can somebody go? What, what, what part of Uganda can someone go to possibly find land? Where are your friends said? Which one? West Nile? Is it in West, West Nile? Nile? Ah, you know, it's hot out there <laughs> in the streets. Yes. Not trying to be West funny, Nile. but yeah. Nebi, those places. Those places. At ah, least the prices you, they shared with us are a bit fairer for now. Way, but then but the, the roads, over there, the, there's no road, yeah. there's no infrastructure. Getting your products to Kampala is quite difficult. It's going to be tricky. Unless, uh, oh, it can work though, because if you're there, your market is not Kampala, it's our brothers and sisters in the Congo, Sudan, Sudan yeah. and, and that region. So, so yeah. It's just about the infrastructure right now that is really good yeah. on that side. But, but think about it, killed, right? Think about it. Where, where we, we got lucky because we took the chance, mm -hmm. we purchased our land. How far are we away from Kampala? It's Tell nice. the good people. How, how, how far? It is two hours. <laughs> You're lying. Two when hours. the road is good, Tina. <laughs> the road is good. How is, how is it two hours? This is one hour. I don't know why Why are you telling me you know, it's two up hours. Up to the real farm. Up to the where it's like one hour, but up to the farm when the road When the roads are fixed, it's an fixed. hour and a half. Yeah. But in terms of distance, it's only 70 kilometers. It so depends on how someone is driving. Even if you're driving normal, <laughs> it's like one hour. From Kampala to Kasana is 70 kilometers. Yeah. From the the, 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 the highway, the farm is only around 20, 22 kilometers inward, inward. Right? So that is around... It's like an hour and a half. When the roads are okay. Mm -hmm. When the roads are not okay, that 22 kilometers can take you longer... Longer, yeah. ...to get to the destination than the actual drive from Kampala to Kasana. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. that road is deemed to be paved. <laughs> It's been, it's but been it's better than before. Better than way when better, we way got better there. when we first got there. Yes. But but no, land is land is getting pricey everywhere, and if you guys want to be get into livestock production or even if you want to grow crops, mm -hmm. you need land. land yeah. And land is like the rent in New York City, the rent in LA, Philadelphia, and all the major cities around the world. It only goes one way. <laughs> it just true. goes up. And you know the best advice that we've always got from people, mm -hmm. whenever we want more land, like buy near your land so that you can definitely expand. If you have the opportunity and you purchase maybe your small True. land, but you want to expand and your neighbors are willing to sell, please yeah. just buy from them. That is the best way for you to actually, expand. That's actually, yeah, we, we, always, we always tell people that. Yes. Hi guys, please, how many people do we have on the chat right now? We have 43. And only have 14 likes guys just like the video because we want more people to come and join us this is how the video will be recommended to other people so the 45 people that we are seeing here please like the video like the video and also tap the love you know give us some love as well so that the, the live stream is recommended to other people so that we can have a discussion and also share so much with other people as well well, our friend Zach says, thanks for the program, mm -hmm. my mentors, Goats Farming, mm -hmm. right? And he's about to start his farm. So, wow. welcome. Really happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but no, let's let's really talk about, well, I would love to come visit the Gambia. I've never, have you been to the Gambia? Tina hasn't <laughs> been to the Gambia. I would love to visit the Gambia. <laughs> um, but I would love to also visit Botswana. 
um, I hope to get to, to go soon. Yes. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And when I go to South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, Botswana is right there, so I have yeah. to go visit. Yeah. Go there. Yeah. Uh, but overall, let's talk about goat farming, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, we could talk about all types all of farming, types of but let's, let's start with goat farming. Mm -hmm. um, I think now, on a weekly basis, we belong to a farmer's group here in Uganda. Yes. And where every most notable goat farmers belong to that same group, okay? Sure. So there's, there's this trend. At first we thought, like, one of the members came in there mm. and was like, you know, I just got an order for, like, seven, 700 goats to be butchered mm. and processed per week to go to the UAE. <laughs> They're like, yeah, dude, we also got the same order like a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And then every other week, mm -hmm. we're getting similar so calls, similar inquiries. And guess what? We can't satisfy that number. Okay? okay. And, and so many people that's in the chat right now, for those of you who have careers, unless you had a tech startup or you started off with a trust fund with already a million dollars in there plus, you cannot see a way forward to make a million dollars in five years. I'm talking annually, right? Um, unless you have, you started your own company and you just catch fire. You could find, you could be the founder of the next unicorn. Mm -hmm. But here's what I've discovered mm -hmm. since being in this field that we're in. Yeah. There are so many people that actually have a path forward to earning $300,000 a year, $500,000 a year. Some are making millions of dollars a year in farming. Some are doing the traditional aspect of farming. Some are also partaking in the supply chain, right? And what do we mean by that? Some are deciding to go into processing juices. Some are deciding to go into oil processing with avocados, all types of um, peanut, you know, you name it. Mm. And then some people are going into meat processing, they're making sausages, like they're adding to the value well, chain, yeah, right? Mm. But then you as a farmer has the opportunity to do more than just farming, right? Mm -hmm. and, the, and those who are getting to those insane numbers I mentioned, right, are the farmers who are choosing to wear multiple hats, mm -hmm. where you produce and you process, where you produce or you have a partnership yeah. with a processing, you know, partner where you get a better price for your product, right? Mm -hmm. Where instead of just like growing and shipping out, where you're growing and you're transforming, you know, like we actually have friends in the, in the North, mm -hmm. you know, who have access to, uh, to the shea butter. Yeah. The East African shea yeah, nut, right? Mm -hmm. Which is which highly is. sought after, which in terms of the beauty um, uh, industry, like, I love my brothers and sisters in Ghana and West Africa, but the East African shea is doing numbers out here in these streets, mm -hmm. guys. So, so most people are looking for that. And so some of the groups up there, right? Mm -hmm. Particularly the knowledge group, right? Yeah. Where they actually... You can find that East African shea mm. being sold at Whole Foods in America. Wow. And it's from Northern Uganda. And the cool thing about it, right, um, that aspect of them, you know, fielding for the actual nut and actually cold pressing it themselves, instead of just getting the nut and just selling wholesale, wholesale these are. guys are printing cash. And so there's a, I know this is a long soliloquy, but my point is, you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, if you have a regular nine to five, mm. and of course I know many of my brothers and sisters in the US that earn $200,000 a year, if you're an attorney, they're a profession with you put it out 1% mm. where you can work a nine to five and still earn a tremendous living, right? True. But many of us are not blessed like that. Many of us are dealt different hands in life where we don't have uh, white collar jobs where many of us are blue collar workers, right? And so most of us are stuck between forty-five to fifty-six thousand dollars a year. Okay. You know, the, I think the median household income in the U.S. 
is between 47 to 53,000. Don't quote me. I have, I have not looked at the statistics in a long time, but it's somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. But if you become a farmer with the actual plan of execution, you literally can make that money in one weekend. That's or you true. can literally decide, you know, and the beauty, the thing I love the most about farming, no matter how you start, right? If you have a plan, and guys, a plan, when we discuss having a plan for farming, mm -hmm. not just, oh, you have a document that sits on your computer, mm -hmm. or it sits at your desk, you know, or a, a drawer or in your, in your knapsack, mm -hmm. but like a business plan, you have to treat it like a person. I know that's a little bit far-fetched, but follow me here for a minute. Every business plan, at least if you're a real business person, mm -hmm. your business plan has to be treated like a human being. You need to nurture it. You need to make sure like you, you tend to it. You can't just have a child and just leave it for fit for itself, right? Yeah, you need to really, truly follow it. And then the thing is, there, there are times mm -hmm. where you have to do serious course correction. Yeah, true. You know, just like if you have a child that goes from being, you know, a toddler, you know, to a preteen, then to a teen. When they get to the teen years, you got to get a short <laughs> rope. You understand? You got to literally be course correcting mm -hmm. as you go. Exactly. And the business plan is very similar because you may have started. You, and right now, some of you who are considering getting into farming, you could be thinking about getting into crop production mm. and then you get to your neighborhood where you actually purchase your land and you may find like, oh my God, there's a severe shortage of chicken in this neighborhood. In this neighborhood. You might, your business plan might just be all about you growing tomatoes, mm. right? Or growing sugar cane for, you know, for, 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 for natural sugar cane syrup or whatever. Exactly. But then when you get to, to the actual land, you might find out your land is more suited to grow beans. Beans. Like that's some <laughs> land that is not suitable for growing matoke. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You know? Especially like in Luero, some yeah. parts of Luero. You, you can't grow matoke. Grow matoke properly yeah. and it comes out properly. Mm -hmm. So you can be able to opt for beans, for soya, you can so plants can also change, but you have to also do your research first. Know what you're capable of doing as well, your potential what you're very you know knowledgeable about then you can definitely start but as you said you should be flexible as well when things get a little rough you have to check your plan properly and say okay this is what i planned but what am i going to do better how am i going to change the situation so you have to look at it but also at least follow it but also fle be flexible a little bit on that that that's what i should really say so read pause comment I really appreciate what you guys are doing. I have started my goats in addition to piggery farming, value farm. You have discipline in me. Thank you, Northern Nigeria. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks for the love. So now here's the thing, right? And I, I have to make sure I land this point in a very succinct way. Okay. I can tell you guys, you know, some, I know like my, you know, I have friends in the, in the U.S. Mm. who are nurse practitioners. Yeah. I have, you know, especially in my our African sisters, mm. particularly those from Nigeria, mm. those from Kenya, including a ton of us from Uganda. When they get to the U.S., trust me, doctors, lawyers, engineers. So the money is sitting there in the diaspora, mm. particularly from, from our African brothers and sisters, okay? Mm. So many of them know what it's like to earn over $100,000 a year. Many know how to even get to two, three hundred thousand dollars a year, right? Wow. Because of real sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. But for the average person who's been basically busting their tails for the last fifteen years in their field, whether you're a teacher or you know a teacher's aide, whatever you've been doing overseas, okay, you you definitely come up against that invisible glass ceiling where you work hard. You put all you have to give. You empty the bucket mm. of energy in your life. And then you look up. You literally, your head is barely above water. Let me tell you something. Whoever finds this live broadcast or find this video later, when you get to this part, I know you guys can, re this will resonate with many of you. Mm. I know so many of my brothers and sisters back in the, in the U.S., where they're working two jobs, some are working three jobs, 
Some are working a full time job, part time job. Then they're doing their Uber on the weekend, mm. and they're doing DoorDash, and they're doing all. They're just hustling. If any of you have the time and the passion for farming, if you put seventy five percent of the effort you put into working all those other jobs, if you just pick one aspect of farming or two aspects of farming, right? into your portfolio yeah. and then you first start by tackling one and then you tackle the second one and then you remain disciplined there are so many people out there tina in the world of farming who have never dreamt of seeing a hundred thousand dollars that will not only get to a hundred k but they will exceed that number in their lifetime That's and true. And, and, and I love talking to people about that because like, like I give you an example, right? Yeah. Our friend from, from Mitiana, we talked about this last time. Yeah. And what's the name of his channel again? MJ. B uh, no, BMJ. BMJ. Our friend BMJ from Mitiana. And this gentleman literally started out with uh, a handful of goats. Mm -hmm. And he was inspired by Tina. And of course, he's a fan of Value Farm. And I love this guy because he exemplified what it means to just be focused, right? And we were speaking again, like mm -hmm. yesterday and mm -hmm. even today. And, and we were talking about like, like, again, going back to the business plan, mm -hmm. the target for VF next year, yeah. right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're literally halfway through the year, but we're already projecting for 2024, yeah. 20, right? So then we were discussing, you know, number of goats we'd like to get to, how many female goats we want to have in production before the year's over. And then this guy, this gentleman actually sold a part of his flock, yeah. right? And I actually didn't know he made a video about stating this. how he earned his first 40 million shillings <laughs> through farming. farming. Mm -hmm. I watched that video with such reverence, guys. I sat there. And I watched my brother. He was counting the money, the level. I didn't make, I didn't sell those goats, mm. but I, I felt like a proud papa mm. or a proud uncle or brother. You understand? Yeah. Because I know that is the way. To see that man stand there at his farm with 40 million Ugandan shillings in his hands. Because he's only been at the farming world. Like a little, like literally. Uh, less than two years, yes, yeah. right? Years. And to be able to, in one weekend, one day, mm -hmm. to make 40 million shillings. Now, for many of you, you tell me the last time you went to your regular job and walked away with, with 10,000 to 12,000 USD cash. That's what farming can do for you, right? Now, imagine his numbers are not yet great. He's a new farmer. But what I love about what he did, mm -hmm. he recognized just like our brother Kenneth, yeah. in order to continue to grow, to grow he to needed to buy more, more land. land. And so he, <laughs> he, he took the Attila the Hunt approach, right? What does that mean? He literally had to take you know, a step back, get a little further away from the actual goal. However, you sacrifice you know, um, production for the, in the immediate t time frame, but he's seeing the longer term opportunity, you know, two years from now, three years from now. And during our conversation, he said, because of our dedication, mm. his goals for 2024 was to try to get to like three to 400 goats. Yes. But now in 2024, he's going for a thousand. Are you serious? I was so proud of that. And like, he's capable. And uh, of With course it is. Of course it is. He's, he's very capable. He's mm -hmm. a capable farmer. Yeah. And he also has a YouTube channel. He's always giving out advice, mm -hmm. you know, especially to farmers who are just getting started. You know, it's, it's proof positive mm -hmm. that you don't need to start with a million goats. This exactly. man started out with a handful of goats. We started out with, what, three goats. Three and people goats. literally used to laugh yeah. at us. We had, we had vast land, as they would call it. Mm -hmm. But and then even, even the animals. workers at the phones are like, ah, we don't have no animals here. Yes, exactly. Even our own workers used to joke on us all the time, all the time. right? 
But then now fast forward to barely like a little over like what 17 months later, mm -hmm. like we're recognizing the region as one of the fastest growing farms, mm -hmm. as one of the larger farms in our area. In our area. We're modest we people. We are not small village <laughs> there in Champula Goma. And 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 so just think about just making, deciding that you're gonna sell a handful of your goats mm -hmm. and you're walking away with ten to twelve thousand USD. One weekend. one weekend. Now imagine when you get up to scale, when he gets up to the one thousand mark, where he where he can literally decide to make that money mm. at least once a weekend. Mm. Once a no, once a weekend. I would say at least once every other weekend. If he's very aggressive, mm. once a weekend, right? Can you imagine? You tell me the last time you had a regular job. Right, that you know, you know what? I can make fifty thousand dollars in one month. That's possible. Not only is it possible, it's it's highly achievable. Right now. With the proper planning, excellent execution, and of course discipline. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say, partner? Any mm -hmm. comments out there you want to read? Yeah, Amito. Hi, Amito. Amito's <laughs> our friend. <laughs> He's saying, I've started a small farm of dogs. Do you think it's profitable? Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, dog, actually, um, dog rearing itself can definitely be profitable, but it also goes into the value addition, value right? Addition so if you're just raising dogs just for the sake of selling puppies, and that can work, you'll make some money. Mm. But if you actually have your dogs and you actually have a training component to it, yeah, while you're selling already trained dogs, why is it that there's so many farmers who, are, who also have now dog as their business? Because it's valuable. You need that security. Not everybody can hire a personal, a, personal, a secu security. personal security. Most of them are getting into it. Yeah, I, I'm a dog lover. You know that. Yes. You know like my, my friend, my son Sterling, yeah, but before he came raised. home from the hospital, he was raised yeah. by my Rama runner. Like it was a giant of the house, you know? So I'm a dog lover. So I, you know, I'm the right person to talk to about dogs. That is true. Yeah, but of course you can make money. Trainings, yeah, that's what I've really seen. It's all about value addition. Mm -hmm. You know, if you grow cashews at your farm, instead of letting these big companies come and just pick all your cashews and what do they do? They just roast it, package it, and then and then mark it up by a hundred percent. Guess what? If you already have the cashews at your farm, get yourself a small roaster. Go on YouTube, learn how to roast your own nuts. Okay? I know that don't even come out, right? Right, learn how to roast those nuts yourself. Okay? And then you package and you sell. Right? And it's the same thing. You know, your district, your your, your region yeah, are known for ground nuts, ground right? Nuts, yeah, yeah, sure. But many of them sell it in its raw form yeah, or, raw or form. untransformed. Exactly. That's so, what they do. And they do ship them a lot. They do. So, so you have an obligation mm -hmm. to go back and teach your people, my friend, to how literally to. the how-tos. You go back I to have so many now. You village. go back to your region and actually show them mm -hmm. the way, right, to actually educate them about processing. The natural way, mm -hmm. right? And also packaging. Mm -hmm. Because that way the money can triple and quadruple. Yeah. And of course, that will be the added contribution you make back to your village. I'll do that. You should. <laughs> and we're going to hold you to that. <laughs> I didn't know you had cashew nuts in we your village. I have a lot of cashew nuts. I thought it was just mainly ground nuts. No, it's ground nuts, then also cashew nuts. But ah. as I told you that the cashew nuts in our village... They don't even pick them. It just falls down the way the pines... Like on we, need, we need to go and investigate. So we don't really. They're, people they're, have them, but it's just for. It's not a value prop in their yes, eyes. Yes. It's and just yet, for, and yet, that goes to show you guys that's a lack of awareness. Yeah, it's lack of and a lack of, of actual education because we know how valuable cashew nuts are. Exactly. You know, a jar of cashew butter costs almost seven to ten dollars more mm -hmm. than the same size of peanut butter, even in the U.S. and everywhere you go. So yeah, YouTube is like a virtual online learning center. You can learn almost anything there. True. Yeah. Kamari is saying yes. Dog business is still very okay. Still German Shepherd and Bulldogs. Yeah. I don't know so much about dogs. Yeah, German Shepherds, Bulldogs, but the Ken the Ken Corsos are also pretty cool. Um, it depends on on what you want, you know. Exactly. Bull Mastiff, you know, like there are different types of breeds, but what's available here in 
what I've seen in Uganda is mainly German Shepherds. I saw a couple of rock rollers. Some people have pit bulls here. Mm. You know, like these are, these are real security dogs, but that's another subject. Please, next question. Yeah, so someone is saying here, in fact, Williams are saying, thank you so much for the ideas that you provided regarding to hill culture, the snail farming last live broadcast. I definitely want to pursue that business. Snail farming, dude, that's a no brainer. I'm so glad that that's William, right? Yeah, that's William. So that's a, listen, William, that's such a wonderful idea. And again, just think about if you're doing the snail, the snail farming aspect of the business, mm. you have to think about not just growing the snails and trying to sell it lo locally here. Mm -hmm. And this is another thing too, I want you guys to take note of this point here. When it, com when it comes to you starting your farm, okay? Yeah. Don't just think about, oh my gosh, I'm in this village. There's like a population of like 300 people. Am I going to make money in that village? You can't think like that. When you start your business, you have to think beyond your village. You have to think here, beyond your country even. That is true. Mm -hmm. To cut you short a little bit, there's someone who was saying you, you went to Australia, you only wanted to start a what? Sheep farming. Oh. But because the market wasn't available, it thinks there's a small market for mm -hmm. now. It's a huge so market. He's, he's going for goat. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But you should definitely also do um, um, sheep as well. Yeah. Because sheep works in that region in a big way west africa sheep the market for sheep is enormous as a matter of fact places like senegal places like nigeria places like ghana like yes they eat goat absolutely but the way you make the big bucks mm. it's also as a compliment to the goat farm get yourself a couple sheep <laughs> test it like our friend <laughs> kenneth <laughs> test it like we did Exactly. I remember when Kenneth was like, you know, ship wasn't something. Ship was not, it was not a la mode. Exactly. <laughs> TV convinced him and was like, okay, let me try. But right now he's into it as well, which is really very, very good. When our friends really see value from something that we are doing and also when they do their research further, because at first I was like, ah, the, local, the, the normal way how we always mm -hmm. say here, like, ah, no one eats sheep, no one eats lamb here, so where am I going to get the market from yet? In the supermarkets, it's the one that even gets done before not any other not, kind not, of not only that, though, mm -hmm. in the UAE, when these guys come to Kenya, and even like Farmer's Choice, mm -hmm. some farmers are selling 500 sheep per week. Yeah. Some are selling that per month, and they just bring the truck. Mm. process put it on the plane send it to dubai and and even one of kenneth's friend he he said and i we talked about this last yeah. week yeah. this guy had almost like six seven hundred sheep wanted to get rid of them wanted yeah. to do something different something. and then literally in one weekend he sold more than 450 sheep he was so shocked <laughs> so happy about the money that he's made now instead of going to get pure goods from South Africa. What is he doing? He's importing pure dockers So don't worry so much about the available market where you are You sometimes have to be the trendsetter. So this our friend William who's interested in actually doing snail farming There's a market here and guys, let me tell you this Uganda East Africa as a whole believe me the market for snails exists because there's a lot of West Africans that are migrating here. Yeah. There's a ton of Nigerians, a ton of our brothers and sisters are coming here for school, for employment opportunities, business opportunities, and they can't find what they're used to eating back home. Back home yeah, and if sure. you could be that one farm who can grow the right type of snails here, and you can process and ship to the UK mm -hmm. and to the US, William, we might need to go to William for a long. <laughs> Okay, in like a couple of years from now, and and one example I would like to give, right, is um, there's a uh, we have a, a friend in Kenya, mm. I can't remember the name of his farm, but this gentleman studied in the UK, mm. came back and he started a duck farm, and initially in Kenya where he's located, mm. right, there was no designated market for duck for farms. Ducks. Um, for, 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 for duck meat or duck eggs, mm. 
So he did it anyway because he just loved ducks. Mm -hmm. And now he's been in business for five years. And the amount of money this gentleman sell an average mature duck for anywhere between 700 Kenyan shillings. If they're mature, like two months, uh, uh, three months or older, mm -hmm. anywhere from 1,800 Kenyan shillings up to 2,000 Kenyan shillings. What does that mean? He's literally selling his he's literally selling his ducks between twenty to thirty dollars per duck. Wow. And usually you have to book like three to five months in advance because he doesn't have enough. And there's even a company here in Uganda. Mm -hmm. For many of you guys who think there's no money in duck farming, guess what? This company sell the most local duck, which are the Muscovy ducks, which are not the most desirable ducks in terms of meat, mm. right? But they're prolific layers, just like the Cocky Campbells, the Indian Runners. Don't get me started with duck because that's my passion, <laughs> okay? But then they actually are growing. They, like, their farm is growing tremendously. Mm. And now they, their eggs are everywhere. Really? Last time I went to care for, I actually saw their duck eggs on the shelves. Imagine. Yeah, and they started out very small with a mm. handful of Moscovy ducks. So don't don't be so hamstrung by the market already being in existence where you are. Mm. Sometimes you have to look beyond the horizon, and you have to be the trendsetter for your market. Talking about trendsetters and whatever, mm -hmm. you can imagine how the pineapples. You know the dried pineapples that we always get from the. Of course. From the supermarket mm -hmm. sometimes most people think you can only enjoy the fresh ones for the juice or maybe just enjoy your fruits as you know pineapple but there's a company i think one of the ugandans yeah, here yeah yeah of course it's, who is it, processing. It, in, in fact it's from um it's from that the 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 name of the company is is the the area that's developing Hoima. it's not Hoima. it's near where we are it's near Kapeka. Nakasa, Kapeka. It's called Kapeka. Kapeka. In yes. fact, yeah, I just finished the, the dry mangoes today. <laughs> so, but who used to tell you about dry fruits like two years ago? You used to talk about it. All like, the time. Never even thought you thought it was a joke, right? It was a joke. And the yeah. guy's true story, when I first came to Uganda, I told my partner here, like, oh my God, if somebody just come to Uganda with a commercial dehydrator, yes. where you can just dehydrate fruits, you can just print money because you're gonna have the best tasting pineapples i've ever had in my life true story i was never a pineapple fan because the pineapples in the u.s let's be honest whether you buy organic or not they're suspect because the majority of them come from central and south america which if you get them there when they're ripe they're delicious okay. but most of the time they have to pick them before they're ready before they're and they ready. put them in that black box okay. right and you're getting it just like if you get pineapples you had a season mm -hmm. it's not quite as nice right yeah. so the majority of the pineapples that they sell in the u.s mm -hmm. is extremely expensive and it's always picked out of season so i was never really a pineapple fan mm -hmm. until i came to uganda i was always a huge mango fan I was always a huge um, grape fan, you know, that I love grapes and mangoes. And I used to tell you guys all the time, man, if somebody come here with one to two commercial dehydrators mm. and they just understand the basics of actually making sure that they, they get the, the cleanliness of the actual processing facility up to code and they just literally dehydrate fruits, mm. package. Yeah. And just send to the U.S. or send to wherever, you did that person would just make a ton of cash. Yeah. And of course now there's one company doing it here. They're doing okay. Exactly. They're doing okay. I was but, so shocked. But I, they're making money. They're making money. Because now when you go to all the supermarkets, you see them. First I saw they were just selling pineapple. Now they're also doing mango. They have pineapple and mango. mango. Really? Yeah, and guess what? You could dehydrate anything. You could dehydrate papaya. The, like in the US, the package that I used to always get had mangoes, papaya, even bananas, the bogoya mm. would be in there. And then they would add a few um, uh, sun-dried raisins or, or dehydrated raisins in that pack as well. Mm. 
And of course, that one pack would be for like, back then it was at least like $7.99 or $8, somewhere around there. I'm sure right now it's like $12 or $12 more, right? So yeah, yeah the opportunity is here. No, Supremo is saying it's time to get into scale. It's my main concern as I want to know to stay of you. I'm also planning on taking a Muscovy cross. You see? Mm -hmm. That is nice. Chris, in Uganda, we have a problem with ducks, surely. I've, I even gave my Muscovy ducks to my friends. Why? I don't know. I'm dying Amara, to know why. Why? <laughs> why did you give out Muscovy ducks? Was there the bucket? What was the problem exactly? Why did you give them out? Because you know that is very valuable, right? The written steel and drop on. I, I'm curious. How do you all keep your records about your livestock? Well, we actually have a uh, we have we have an Excel sheet that we created. That one is effective, but a lot of people here are old school, so they feel more comfortable with paper. But we actually have a vet who's doing a really good job with record keeping. And it's the same thing for everybody in the department man our department, department managers. managers yeah. You know, they actually do a wonderful job of actually even um like when we actually have um pigs that are born, when they get to a certain age before they can actually get separated from the mom or right as we set wean them off, yeah. They get tagged. We know who the who who the who the male pig is, we know who the mom is, we have the numbers. It's an actual very simple way to do it. The problem though, guys, unless you're on top of that process, a lot of the farm workers are lazy and they're careless. Some of it is due to lack of training. Some of it is to lack of care. They're just going to do whatever. So, but if you yourself, you know you're a serious farmer, it is your responsibility to make sure that you give them the supplies, you provide the tags, you provide the actual protocol at your farm for everyone to follow. And then the rest, it will take care of itself, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, would I like to use a different type of app to, to, to keep the records? Actually, I do. I was actually talking to a friend of ours. His name is uh, Mr. Darlington. Mm -hmm. He's currently in Switzerland, but he's a Nigerian brother, very talented. And he actually designed a program called Pickaxe mm -hmm. that we're going to be testing um, to keep all of our records. And if it works the way we, we think That's it will work, we'll definitely share that information with you guys as well. Because I think there should be an open beta beta uh, to be to have the program tested, the app That's tested. And if it works, then it's going to go completely full scale. Yeah. yeah. So I'll definitely reach back out to them. Yeah. But what you have to know that we record each and everything, each animal at a farm, especially our goats, our cows, our pigs, every animal has their own page and we really make sure that the medical history is there, the, the, what? the breeding as well is right there. So we always make sure that at least everything is recorded properly so that in case maybe someone comes to buy from the farm, at least they get all the records that they have to check. And also, especially like for medication, they have to follow up on some of the things that are due to be done to the animals. So that's how it is. In fact, Aaron is saying, I'm looking into blockchain for the record keeping because it can be changed, trying to tie into the idea of tracking in breeding, but I'm in the US. So, so I also it. see forever yours, um, my dear brother and sister in farming as an old man that is planning on moving his entire family near your country, Rhonda, mm -hmm. this year. I'm also motivated to get involved in supporting this type of, I'm assuming, farming or business. Mm -hmm. Well, forever yours, welcome, welcome to the free. That's all I can say. <laughs> You're welcome. Because this is where, you know what? We posted something on TikTok. Mm -hmm. huh? The last video. The last video we posted on TikTok, but the comments we got right there. That's when I realized that some people are not believers in farming. Huh? <laughs> well, you have to understand too, a lot of, so, why do you think most people have all the misnomers about farming? It's because they've never planned. Mm. They don't have a plan of execution. They don't have any guardrails to guide them. Guys, most people, when it comes to business, right, most people hate that part of starting a business. Yeah. Most aspiring entrepreneurs, when they come up to us, 
Even when people call me, they email, and I always give them the same answer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I want to start a farm. Okay, uh, today I'm taking off the chains, guys. I'm taking off. I'm taking off the restraint. I'm gonna give it to you guys, bro. The way it is. I'm gonna give it to you, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you what some of you out there tend to do, which really gets my blood boiled. Okay. Mm. I cannot stand when people reach out to us, and they want you to write them a business plan. I'm a farmer, just like you guys. We have to literally do countless hours of research. We're not experts at writing business plans. There are so many companies that have templates out there mm -hmm. where it's basically you have to just, it's plug and play, right? Where you, you research your, your units, you research your course um, per unit, right? At customer acquisition cost, um, your budgeting, marketing and advertising, and of course, starting capital, projected earnings, this is just basic information you need to fill out about your business plan. But some people are so lazy, right? They don't even want to do that for themselves. Like so many times people call up and say, hey, can, can, I, can you send me your business plan? I'm like, no. That's internal document for our company, mm -hmm. right? What our plan is for what our, the VF plan may not be the plan that's going to work for you. The plan that we put together right, it's going to be very different from the plan you're going to put together for yourself. Reason being, starting capital might be different, right? Yeah. Where you are regionally might be different. Our plan to raise goats and actually have sheep and have a mixed farm mm -hmm. is feasible because we got lucky with the land that we ended up purchasing, right? Yeah. My friend here loved Matoke and we tried to plant Matoke at the it, farm. It failed. Guess what? We've had my token that's been at the same height for almost three years. It's just never gonna happen. Okay? So you have to understand when We're you put when you put your when you put your business plan together, no one's gonna critique you. Nobody's your business plan is your business plan. Okay? You don't have to publish it for the world, right? It's it's simply a document that holds you accountable. You should think about your business plan. The same way you think about having a personal trainer. The same way you think about having a financial planner. Mm -hmm. That's somebody else who's there that's going to hold you accountable to what it is that you want you wanted to accomplish. Okay? Yeah. Many people will retire at a certain age, but if they don't have that financial planner, you know, that's going to keep them on track. You know, whatever money that they want to put into their savings, they will just use it. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I want you guys to keep in mind. You have to have a plan. And most people, when we talk to them, they have the money, they have the land, or they're ready to get the land, they're ready to just buy the breeds, and they're ready to hit the ground running. And more often than not, when you don't have the guardrails, when things get tough, right, you're not going to have a blueprint to guide you through the rough waters, right? You're not going to have a way for you to say, oh my gosh, you know, I set aside this much money for for my seeds, for, for the seeding mm -hmm. of this business. I'm already 30% over budget, okay? Where did I go wrong? You know, if you have a business plan, you could easily backtrack to see, you know, how much more money you're spending, where you're spending money in unexpectedly, how you can cure that situation. But if you don't have that guideline, you're just going to be spending blindly, and, and, and you may find yourself running out of capital and find yourself out of business. And, more, and, and most of the time, those are the people mm. that are going to be out there bashing farming. farming. And those are the same people that are going to say, oh, let, let me just take my retirement package yeah. to start a farm. Let me tell you guys, that is, to me, when you're a young farmer, the risk, just like investing in the stock market, right? The younger you are, the more aggressive you can you're be, not. right? Because time is on your side. But when you, the, as you get older, you have to become more conservative with your finances, right? And many people have it wrong. They think they have to be retired. Then they have to be living on their pension. Then you go on the farm. Well, guess what? There's a reason you retire, right? Because when you retire, you don't have the same ability to go out there and actually earn a living as if you were still in your 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s, right? And it's the same thing. So 
when you guys start out early, yeah. and our friend in Mitiana is barely 30, 32, mm -hmm. maybe, right? Mm -hmm. And this guy now went from having a regular job to, to tasting mm -hmm. ten to $12,000 a weekend. You think he's ever going to go back to a regular no, job? No way. Can you ever see yourself who spent more than 15 years in the corporate sector? Could you ever see yourself working a regular job with willingly going back to the regular workforce after being in this field for almost three years? Seriously. You have the floor. <laughs> Seriously? Unless otherwise. But I don't see myself. No, 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 no. Can you willingly? Willingly? At this moment where, we, no. where you are, even when we were starting the farm, even all the, the, the challenges, the learning curve, right? That was a challenge, right? Mm. Um, that we had to endure. Can you right now today wake up and see yourself getting up to go to a regular job six days a week, Tina? No, Dr. No. You know why? Because I'm one of the persons who is even encouraging my friends mm -hmm. who have been there longer. Because I realized when I got out of that corporate world, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, office nine to five. They call know? it the rat race in America. Yes. When I got out of it, there's something that just struck mm. about my It's my called creativity. living. <laughs> <laughs> the creativity, thinking, you know, differently. And whenever I speak to my friends at work, the people I used to work with, I also try to really encourage them, tell them how they can spend their money, how they can, you know, from their savings, they can do something really better than you earning a salary, constant salary. Sometimes it cannot even change in a year. So I don't see myself going back to that kind of setting seriously for now. Unless otherwise, but willingly, I cannot I'm not going well, I can I can say this. I don't I don't care about unless otherwise. I can't. <laughs> you you could be politically correct. If no, you I'm want. just saying. I'm just saying. Lord willing, <laughs> as long as the farm continues no. to provide, the exactly. Lord the Lord continues to show us the way, and the blessing continues to shine upon us. I I'm telling you guys, I have found my calling. It's always been in the back of my mind. It's always in the back of my. It's always been on my heart. Do you know what happened? Uh -huh. I already I convinced like three people, uh -huh. and they got out and they really thanked me. They're like Tina, <laughs> thank you so much for opening my eyes. Yeah, I was really very scared, and it's always being scared of the unknown, being scared of what you're going to face out there. Sometimes we just fear because you don't know what you're going to face in reality. But sometimes when you really go face it, you're going to really make it. So I've, I've really talked to some of my friends who have been really tied into that, you know. The thing, the thing is, it's not good. There's nothing quite like building something on your own, and there's nothing quite like. How can I say this? There's nothing quite like starting a business coming up with an idea and a concept and then you dream about it you think about it mm -hmm. you tussle with it you know can you put your heart and cash into it can you give up the security of your regular job or your career to pursue your dreams and your passion i can just say this unequivocally mm -hmm. when i wake up in the morning and guys my alarm goes up at 4 15 4 30 in the morning and to be honest, nine out of ten times, I don't really need my alarm. My eyes just open, open and it's time open. to go to work. And and yes, the journey is long. Yes, it's going to be challenging. But at the end of the day, <laughs> mm. there are times where you are in your bed and you get a call <laughs> from the vet or you check the staff group. And they're like, you know, oh, two pigs delivered today. We have 18 new piglets from one, mm -hmm. and we have 15 new piglets from another one. And you're like, wow, look at that, you know? And, and when the calls come, somebody want to come to your farm to take 100 goats, or they're there to take 30 piglets, mm -hmm. or they're calling to see if you have 500 goats available. Exactly. And then you do the math, you're like, wow. You know, the freedom you have. Now, don't get me wrong. No matter what business you start, whether it's a tech or a restaurant, 
you're going to have to work even harder than if you had a regular job. But by the same token, when you get to profitability, right, the work will never truly end, but there's nothing like working for yourself. Exactly. Even when you're tired, exactly. you can put in an extra hour for yourself because truly that level of fatigue, that level of sweat, blood and tears you put into it, sometimes you're going to have sleepless nights. But you know what? When you come out on the other end, mm. you know you are building something for your family and that aspect of legacy. That in itself is all the fuel that I need to know <laughs> that I'm making a difference for the next generation. Like what we go through, what we share with you guys, you know, we, 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 we providing a pathway for those of you who wouldn't know where to begin or how to begin, how to begin. right? A way for you to find your way into this incredible field. Because guys around the globe, some of the wealthiest families around the globe, not just in America, many of these guys have that wealth simply because of their involvement in agriculture. You know, there's, there's, there's when it comes to secrets, when it comes to lack of awareness, and I can tell you guys, for me, as a black man grow, that grew up in the U.S., right? There are so many of you that are in this chat right now, but that will find this, this, this rerun later on, that have no clue how the financial system work. Mm -hmm. many, of our, many of our brothers and sisters that look like me and you, because we didn't have someone to teach us Many of us don't even know how credit card, credit system work, period, right? Until you get into university or until you get into your career, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember, like for me, like when I started working as a banker, I was so angry at the fact that I started my finance career at the age of 21, 22. Mm -hmm. And I remember working the very first banking position I held was at Bank of America. And I worked in Brooklyn, New York. I was hired by Fleet Bank. And I was I started out as a as as a as a PB. Then of course as I continued to go to school, mm -hmm. I raised my profile and I ended up in the private banking sector. But I remember sitting there on Eastern Parkway, right across the street from the biggest Jewish uh, uh, school slash church in East, uh, yeah, Eastern Parkway. Many of you from New York City know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. And I remember sitting there with a young Jewish gentleman that just turned 18. And we were just opening his student account for him. And this gentleman got approved for a credit card with a $20,000 limit on it. At eight, like he was 18 in like a week, uh, mm, like a week like over 18, 18, right? Mm. And I remember just sitting there asking myself, how in the world can this 18-year-old kid get oh, approved? Okay. He didn't even apply. We just put his name in the system and his social security number. Mm -hmm. And in the system, it just gave him a card for $20,000. And I was perplexed. So I, I reached out to a senior banker. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, how is this possible? Yeah. He's like, oh, you don't know? Mm -hmm. And my, I'm already working in the financial system, right? Yeah. And then he was like, yeah, that kid, most likely, when he was 14 years old, his mom and his dad had them on their credit card. Oh, okay. And so by the time he turned 18, even though he never physically had a credit card, but his credit history was, was being built. Okay. And the reason that made me so angry, right? And I came from a somewhat affluent family. My mom was a nurse, you know, like, like we, you know, we did okay. I grew up mm -hmm. in Manhattan, right? But these are the lessons that our people, even if they have this information, yeah. they're just not going to willingly share it. Sure. You understand? And many of our people, due to lack of awareness, they just don't know this information. They don't know how life insurance works. We don't know how the financial system works. We don't know how to leverage credit to our advantage. 
And I remember I want, one time I asked someone, an uncle of mine who thought he was a know-it-all, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I asked him, if somebody offered you a million dollars, this is, in fact, I can call him up right now. Mm -hmm. He would laugh at me. And I was like, dude, if, so, if I were to give you a million dollars and uh, zero credit rating, mm -hmm. or if I give you $250,000, right? Mm -hmm. And I gave you a perfect credit rating. Yeah. Which one do you think is more valuable? He was like, give me the million. And then when I, and then, the, and this is why I stumped him. Mm -hmm. I said, great, if I give you a million dollars and that building across the street that costs $1.1 million, mm -hmm. can you buy it? He was like, uh, probably not. And the definite answer is absolutely not. But if you have that 250K yeah. and a perfect credit rating, believe me, you can probably get that same building that's worth 1.1 with just a hundred thousand dollars down. I'm just that that was just a a, mm -hmm. a, a scenario that I posed to him mm -hmm. and he failed predictably, right? And it's the same thing when it comes to business. Yeah. Many of us, right, we were were born into families who only understood working, True. who only understood the mindset of a worker. It's so difficult when you're programmed mm -hmm. as a child that you saw your dad going mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. You see your mom yeah. working a regular job. Right. You see yeah. your grandfather working a regular job until he's in his 70s. It's so difficult for you as the <laughs> offspring yeah. of that product, right, to, to, to dream of having your own business because you're not in that environment. Exactly. And yet when we look at most of our Jewish brothers, our Indian brothers, our Asian brothers, right, like they kids, you know, they bring them to the office. They have the insurance companies. They have the grocery stores. They have mega construction companies. And all of these kids grow up with that education. And it rubs off on them. Mm -hmm. And by the time they're 14, 15 years old, you know, Johnny or Jane, they're not thinking about working for J.P. Morgan. Yeah. They're thinking about opening their own insurance company. They're thinking about opening their own real estate development company or management company. And they want to be the boss. And so many of you may have found this a little later in life, but that's the beauty about being human. We have the ability to adapt. We have the ability to learn. We have the ability to overcome our own limitation yeah. that we set in our mind, mm -hmm. right? By simply learning. We have the capacity to learn anything. You know, the human brain is the absolute perfect machine, right? We can learn to do anything if you're interested, sure. if you have the work ethic, if you have the discipline, you can definitely get to where you want to go. It's not too late, you know, maybe for, for us right, who got into the game a little later, but you know what? If you in it, your sons can be in it too. Your daughters can be in it as well. That's and true. that's the legacy factor that should 100% be that fuel in your tank. Whenever it gets hard, whenever you may want to quit or you may want to lay down, that's what's going to keep you going because we're not doing this for us. That's true. I'm doing this for the next generation. I'm hoping there's a 15-year-old black boy in Mississippi or <laughs> Alabama or here in Uganda or Kenya or wherever on the motherland that's going to find this video at some point and like this is a time capsule, right? Yeah. And they're going to find this information and this blueprint is going to lead them to their destiny. And that's the reason we do what we do. Wow. It's true. Good job. Huh? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> really? Someone is even... <laughs> really to... I'm Someone gonna is... get. I'm going to walk off this couch. <laughs> Someone is even saying good lessons and examples dropped on. You know what is really funny? Someone even said here, if you fail to run a business you run out of you run out of business the workers only pretend to be serious in your presence after no one cares actually i have a friend of mine mm -hmm. who is still in the corporate you know mm -hmm. world so she has her side hustle she has her retail show mm -hmm. she has even mobile money as also side business in that show mm -hmm. so i was asking her she was you know she was telling me her issues how 
she appreciates what we are doing and mm-hmm. value from. She's like, oh, I can see you. You seem to be happy. And the way you're running your business seems to be okay. I was like, yeah, I'm really happy. And things are really, you know, moving on so well. So she was telling me, you know what? I have my retail shop, but I have a challenge here. I'm so scared of quitting right now mm-hmm. because, you know, I really want this address. I want to keep the address of the corporate company so that whenever people, I get email and whatever, at least comes to that company. But still, my business is really doing well only when I'm around because she also employed someone to run it for Can't her. do that. Yeah, so someone is there running for her during their time as she's in office. Then later on in the evening, she goes back to the business. But she was telling me, you know what, I have really a challenge that whenever I go in the evening, I work, like I really focus so much on the shop and I get even more sales at the shop. But when this lady is right there, she doesn't even do much. Even the evenings that she's alone, the sales are not what I usually mm-hmm. get when yeah. I'm on in the shop. Mm-hmm. So I was telling her, why can't you really focus? Because she was like, even I make more money in my shop mm-hmm. than my salary. Yeah. But just because I want to keep the address, mm-hmm. that's why I'm still working. Here. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I don't know where I can get the courage to go and sit in my own shop because I don't know what if it fails, what if it doesn't mm-hmm. really work out properly. But yet I make a lot of money from my shop. Mm-hmm. What do you think I should really do? I was like, do you know what? That go is a no it. brainer. Yeah. You can go for it. Imagine if for the little time that you spare in the evenings after work, you go to the shop and you make more sales than what you actually get at the mm-hmm. company. Imagine you working the whole day mm-hmm. and even make, you know, most... Because she was even telling me about her other friend. They mm-hmm. almost have the same retail business, mm-hmm. but she's doing it full time. Mm-hmm. And she even goes to, you know, get this, this to products from, to buy from Turkey. Dubai, even from Kenya, mm-hmm. some of the things. And she, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. so she was like, no, she goes there, I send her, but, you know, I give her extra money to transport for mm-hmm. me. So, but she's really doing so well. It's just because I'm so scared. So being scared of the unknown is something that is really disturbing her. But I really told her she could really try it and also focus. So do not really fear about starting your own business, doing something of your own. It will even succeed better when you're there yourself so that you can monitor how everything is really running. So I hope she really got my advice. I'm not really talking to her in a while, but... I'll definitely follow up and see what it is right now. Uh, thank you, Hardy, for the comment. You do want to read that. Hardy? Yeah. Say, Grafton, you could not have said it any better. You guys are the best to listen to. So encouraging. <laughs> it is breathtaking. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. We really appreciate that. Yeah. And let me address the issue about workers. Mm-hmm. I think, I think, honestly, that's the hardest part about becoming a boss or becoming an entrepreneur and many people think it's something that happens just on the continent it's not true Mm. true story guys story time with grafton and tina (laughs) i actually founded an insurance company back in orlando florida that was very successful right um i remember when we first started scaling that business when it went from just me and my then partner um, and I remember the first five employees we hired there was one girl that was supposed to be a superstar agent mm-hmm. and <laughs> you can't make this up she was one of the highest paid in the office because she came highly recommended and we gave her like I think she was getting like 40% more than everyone else And this girl came in, she was already licensed, she was already trained, already had experience. And I remember like at the time, like we had, we were going back and forth between Orlando and Arizona, you know, Mm -hmm. traveling because we were looking to expand the business from east to west. Yeah. And I remember like I used to tell my then partner, I'm like, hey man, something is wrong with this chick because she's been there now for almost a year and a half like i'm sorry she was there for almost five months doing the bare minimum so she was actually using my one of the maps that i I, like we bought for the office and so something just told me like one day when we came back from arizona 
I logged into the Mac, right? And and I literally went through the browser history. This girl was coming into the office, going on YouTube, watching Taylor Swift videos, and shopping yeah. for all kinds of personal items, looking for other jobs, right? <laughs> While she was working. That's what she was doing remember from, that remember that story, right? Yeah. From morning till she got off the clock. So why do I say that, right? That's not just an African thing. Yeah. It's a human thing, right? Mm -hmm. Some people are naturally gonna want to work. Some people are naturally gonna try to work you for your paycheck, for a paycheck, mm -hmm. and they don't care whether your business make it or not. And that's the reason why we always tell folks: if you're gonna invest your money, then you need to make sure that you invest your time as well. Yeah. You understand? Now we're only human. We have families. We have responsibilities. Can you be around a hundred percent of the time? No, and nobody's expecting you to. Right? It's a gradual thing. Um, but then by the same token, by the time you make that full commitment, right? And if yeah. you have a viable business and you give it the time that it deserves, it deserves yeah. chances are your business is going to thrive yeah, true. more often yeah. than not. It's as simple as that. That's true. Yeah. There's someone was asking, I don't know whether I can get that comment, was mm -hmm. asking how we chase wild animals from our farm. Actually, I stopped off. I st in fact, a, 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 a fox came in and grabbed two ducks, and the guys actually did a. They gave that fox the one-two combo, mm -hmm. and um, the, actually, I have a really nice fox hide being dried <laughs> in the sun at the farm as we speak. But they do come. They come. Um, but what we do, we actually try to spray to keep the snakes away. Yeah. I think that's like. Out of all the predators out there, the snakes are the one yeah, the that will do the most damage, yeah, right? True. Um, because they don't care if it's a South African or a local. If, if they, that animal gets close enough, they're just going to bite it and it's going to die instantly almost. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But we do, we do fence as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And our staff does a really good job of actually protecting the animals. But we also have geese. We yes. have guard geese. That's what I wanted to talk about. We also have um, our guinea fowls. Mm -hmm. So they work hand in hand. The guinea fowls are the initial alarm that alerts everyone. Yeah. And the geese, geese the are protection. the ones that come to protect. Let me tell you something. You guys have not lived until you see a flock of geese, geese. attacking a, a, a fox or attacking, you know, even a person. If they don't know you, you try to invade. The no, area no. where, and, and, and what's even more fascinating, you could share this, right? Mm -hmm. The chickens know exactly. who their bodyguards are. <laughs> explain, explain, explain. Now at the farm, this, this was really very <laughs> yeah, funny for yeah. me. Cause I've I told you about it. that before. Yeah, you told me about mm -hmm. it. But whenever like the, these sprays, you know, these birds that come to get the chickens, mm -hmm. the small chicks come around the farm. The chickens run towards the geese and the geese are the protection that they surround them. They fight for them. Mm -hmm. That was really very funny. And some funny thing about the geese at the farm. You know, geese can even open a tap. Huh? That's mm -hmm. how strong they They're are. They're very smart. They are very, very smart animals. And also for protection-wise, if you have them at your farm, it's really a plus for you. So it's not only for consumption, but also for protection at your farms. So these have really protected our chickens from being taken, and even from the wild animals. Today, the fox, when the fox came to to attack, you know, they came and fought it, and surprisingly, you know, they they even killed the fox. They got him, yeah. They got him, yes. Yeah. They killed the fox. Imagine the geese against the fox, and it was a huge one. They got and it. I was really very surprised. So, for all farmers out there, those are some of the things that you should put into consideration as a mixed farmer. At least get some some geese. To oh your farm. man, Tina, read Anthony's uh, comment. Which one? Anthony, mm -hmm. I have a pig farm. I have, I have a pig farm, and I work on the farm, but no, no good production for over one year now. What do I do? I'm just looking for farm to go and to do it myself. Please advise me, Anthony from Nigeria. So he's looking for funds. So no, no, I don't think no. I think I'm not sure how he worded this. I have a pig farm and. I worker or 
maybe he has workers, right? Mm -hmm. On the farm, but no good production for over a year now. Um, uh, so the thing is, Anthony, I can guarantee you we know the answer to that question because chances are it starts with the type of pigs that you purchase, the breeds. Mm -hmm. There's also going to be a, a matter of what you're feeding those, those pigs. And it's also a matter of the actual management, right? Yeah, sure. So if you're not physically present, right, um, then your staff might be letting you down. It could be an issue of management or lack thereof, but there's a 99.9% .9 chance you purchase stock from an inferior breeder who didn't have quality genetics. And when you start out like that, no matter how much money you spend on feeds, or even if you do have proper management, you're just not going to be able to get a pig to grow that's not made out of the right genetic makeup. So it, it could definitely be one of those factors. So You could you, also tell us more what exactly, what challenges have you got with the production so that we can know exactly where you're coming from. Someone is saying here, how do you guys deal with vets? How to pay vet a hefty price to vaccinate approximate to vaccinate <laughs> approximate the price of one goat yeah. for the herd of yeah. fifty animals? What do you all advise intending to scale to one hundred? I, I can tell you this for a fact, guys. You know, when we discussed the business plan earlier, one of the factors was vet care, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 I think in this country, I can only speak for Uganda. I don't know how it is in Sierra Leone. I don't know how it is in Nigeria. I know how it is in Kenya because Kenya actually have professional vets. In Uganda, where we are, there's an epidemic of thieving vets. Mm -hmm. And I can say this with no fear because I'll say this at, at top of my lungs. Mm -hmm. We have a quite a number of vets in this country that after they graduate from vet, vet, veterinary school, right, their um, only purpose in life is to rob people, is to come to your farm to lie to you. Many of these guys will come to your farm with fake medication. Many of these guys will come to your farm and, and order, scare you into providing a necessary treatment. And so, after getting bitten by a bunch of fake vets, which I would say was 100% of the vets that we work with, yeah. um, we did what we had to do. Thanks to Dr. Nicholas from Kenya, he actually referred us a wonderful vet that came from Kenya, and he gets paid a very sizable salary. But honestly, I wish I can quadruple it because he's been worth every penny. Yeah, You know, and that's what's been... A godsend because when you scale and you have these thieves come on your farm they're gonna try to charge you insane fees okay. and what really annoy me right and I have to give credit to our DVO yeah I don't know what's his name Timothy his name is Timothy from the rural district yeah. right Timothy has been a wonderful partner to value farm he's been, so he's been very very helpful to our company as he is for most of the other farmers in the region as well. Timothy and Lokwago. Those two, right? Mm -hmm. But then again, you may find yourself in a different district in Uganda mm -hmm. where you're supposed to get foot and mouth vaccinations for free. You're supposed to get PPR vaccinations for free mm -hmm. based on where you are, right? And you're going to find some of these thieves will come onto your farm and try to charge you hundreds of thousands of, sh of shillings right? For a vaccination that's free. That's supposed to be distributed to the whole district as a way to, to manage diseases, to prevent outbreaks, right? Mm -hmm. And and many times they don't even make that information available, available to the you. farmers. Many people don't even know. You, know you can go to your local DVO, you okay? The your, right? Your district veterinary officer, and they're supposed to keep you on schedule for those two vaccines, right? And those are the ones that can do the most damage, right? That can come in and just ravage your, your whole flock overnight. And it's the same thing with the pneumonia. The pneumonia vaccine itself, they should 
make it available that should be subsidized, but it's not, you know. But apart from that, if you if if you can get on the same page with your DVO, you have a great chance of succeeding because that cost savings can mean the difference of you adding an extra 10 to 15 goats a year versus you just barely, you know, breaking even. So I'm sorry to say this as much as I love my vet, the vet that we have not, we love him, we respect him so much, but almost then again, there was another vet that we worked with that did a decent job. You know, it cost a lot of money. Dr. Bowles was honest. He did a good job testing our, our animals, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there are some who are really honest, available, reliable. I'm sorry. I have not so, met any in Uganda. I'm sorry. Dr. Dr. Bowles was fine. Mm -hmm. Guys, let me give you guys another one. There was another thief that we work with. His name is Joseph, okay? I'm sorry, I will call him out by name. This guy came to the farm. He is supposed to be an AI expert as a vet. I'm convinced as a staff, as owners, mm -hmm. this guy for a year and a half was coming to our farm to inseminate our cows. And he was 100% coming and injecting our cows with anything but real semen. Because this is the game that these guys play. This is like a perfect example, right? Mm -hmm. Where they'll come to your farm and you're thinking that they're giving, that they're injecting your animals with real medication. Many times they're giving your animals fake medication mm -hmm. so that you can actually get an outbreak, you know? Many times the same vets are the ones coming to your farm that will infect your own animals if you're not sharp. Do you remember the last time that gentleman that came to test for Brucella at the farm? Yeah. If we didn't have a vet there, and if we didn't have a keen department manager Watching this guy showed up with five syringes, yeah, to test use. over to, to to he was his plan was to use same. the same syringes, right? The same five syringes on over three four hundred goats, for example. Okay, and and you might have had maybe one goat with Brucella, but by the time this guy was gonna be done with his testing, three or four weeks later, your entire herd would have been infected by Brucella. You know, and these guys, they do not practice ethically. They don't care. The only thing they adhere to is how can they squeeze a farmer out of their money, you know? And many of them have relationship with these drug stores yeah. where even before they come to your farm, they're going to tell you, oh, you need to admit this treatment, that treatment, or you need to do this type of therapy, and then you're getting that drug from their, from their store, right? They're not trying to help you. They're trying to squeeze you. And that's what we've ran into since the time I've been in Uganda. I'm sorry, I have not met an honest vet in Uganda. <laughs> apart from Dr. <laughs> Val, that was the only one. Mm -hmm. He kept it real, he was honest. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, he worked at McCary University. Right. You know, he did a very nice job for us. But then a lot of these guys will come to your farm, they'll find a minor problem that they can prevent. Mm -hmm. But instead of preventing it, they're going to try to prolong it so that that way when your animals start to die, you will pay them anything. Something that could typically cost like $5, they're going to ask you for $100. That's at at, at the moment they know you're desperate, that's when they're going to come for you. So if I had to say anything about the feel of farming, that is the area, if you're an honest vet that's living in Kenya, Please find your way to Uganda. You're going to make a lot of money. You simply have to be honest and just be ethical. You're going to be a very wealthy person in this country. Because every person I know that has a commercial farm, that's the number one complaint. Mm. That's all I have to say on the subject. And you guys know who you are. How fun was it to fly that girl? Wow. <laughs> guys, it was so epic. When I fired that girl, I seriously had a party that evening. Are you serious? I sure did. I still remember what we had. Actually, we oh, ordered Chipotle huh? for the whole staff. And then, of course, we terminated her. It is the way that I did it. <laughs> I literally came into the office and actually pulled up the browser history and was like, wow, I didn't know Taylor Swift was a part of the whole curriculum. When you're supposed to be calling customers and, you know, doing quality checks. 
I, we, we escorted her off the building, gave her her last check, and that was it. Never to be seen again. Wow. And then, of course... Could they tell me, like, disciplinary and all that? No, that's a, that's a straight termination. That's a straight termination. That that's that's essentially in America they call that time theft. Yeah. You know, like if you if you're supposed to be working and you're not really working and you're just there on the clock, you know, especially <laughs> when you can prove it, man. Yeah, it was epic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I enjoyed it. You enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like to fire people. I know it's not nice. But when you have to especially people that deserve to be terminated there's so just the people will just put you to the limit really yeah That's some really... some people deserve deserve what they get because they earn it yeah oh kevin is saying oh thanks great you have added me with me some something great in animal protection oh for the geese that's nice then baba lende mambo how can you guys help me right now i want to go into farming Goats and cattle. How much can I have on hand to start with? In fact, we have a video that is coming up on Monday, and that question is answered in that video. How much you can start with for goats and cattle? So wait for that video. It is going to be detailed as well because we featured Mark still part know, two. Part two, yeah. So we discussed numbers. We discussed you know profitability and all that. So. That video is going to help you. It's going to be up on Monday. So wait up for that video. You will definitely get the numbers and also... But right now, to answer, uh, what's her name? What's the person who asked that question? It's a long name. It's Baba Lede Mambo. Okay. Well, Miss Mambo. Or mm -hmm. Mambo. I don't, I'm not sure Mambo. if you're male or female. Yeah. Um, I can tell you, if you're going to start with both cattle and goats, uh, it comes down to the same thing. Find a reputable breeder, okay? Mm -hmm. And whatever you do, whichever farm you go to, make sure you see all the vaccination records because that's what's going to trip you up, okay? When you go to a farm where they've never dewormed the animals, where they've never vaccinated for foot and mouth or brucella or any of these other diseases that can wipe you out, and then you bring those animals to your farm. And when you start your actual therapy process where you start to get them adjusted to the new environment, chances are that's when you're gonna lose your shirt. Because you can take a flock of healthy goats from a farmer an hour or three hours away from your farm, you're thinking they're looking nice, they're looking healthy, mm -hmm. because those animals are used to that environment. Environment, yeah. Right, they used to, and some of these animals build the natural immunity for against worms, and, and again, this could be a good thing too, by the way. I want to make sure you guys understand where I'm coming from. Okay. If you go buy your flock from a farmer who have animals that have the natural immunity to worms and all of these other um, uh, elements that can destroy your flock, right? That's not a bad thing, right? But you still need to vaccinate against some of the disease that you can't build any immunity to. You can't build immunity against foot and mouth. You're not gonna build immunity against pneumonia, right? But a lot of farmers that farm the old way, mm -hmm. they actually know how to treat their goats the natural way without natural injecting way. them with anything. Mm -hmm. So you may find goats from the western part of Uganda where the goats have never been dewormed and yet they're looking healthy, yeah, they're looking, looking huge, amazing. they look amazing. And then you bring them to your farm and if you're not aware of that, you start to deworm them and you start off with the wrong dosage, you, you can lose the whole flock overnight. So getting back to the question at hand, find a reputable breeder, find out how they've been raising their animals. If they, if they don't have records, then you, you need to just find another breeder, okay? You need to be patient, don't get happy and just buy whatever you find and don't be cheap, okay? What I mean by that, don't think like, oh my God, I'm just gonna go find the, the farmer that's selling his goods for the lowest price. I'm just going to stock my farm with that. Because mm. in the long run, you're going to end up paying triple the money. Okay? Yeah. Because you're going to bring those goods to your farm. They're not going to come into heat. They might be horrible at, care, at caring for their kids. You know? So you need to go to a reputable breeder that actually have breeding stock available. Okay? And of course, you pay a premium for breeding stock because it's more expensive. 
and of course those goats that you select for your breeding program you know or have to display qualities that would keep them into your breeding program just like if you have goats that have mastitis or mm. you know they, they experience other types of ailments you're gonna want to call them right you're not gonna want to keep that in your flock and so these are the things you need to keep in mind particularly when it comes to cows you know what i can tell you again find a good bull that has some high quality genetics and find breeders that actually have good stock same thing for the cows but the one lesson i hope you all take away from this stream mm -hmm. when you go buy your breeding stock guys pay the money find a vet just give them their daily rate you buy all the testing materials yourself okay and you make sure you at least test for brucella mm -hmm. because if you don't test for brucella nothing can derail your path of growth and farming than discovering that your goats have basically or cows have an incurable disease mm -hmm. that ultimately will have to be put down and so you can start out well by actually having quality stock and then you see a beautiful goat on the side of the road or two or three and you just bring it into your flock you don't test it and then all of a sudden all your goats are infected with brucella and brucella is the is the scarlet letter once you have that there's no escape the goats have to go same thing with the cows okay and then you can't then sell those same animals to another farmer without disclosing that okay yeah I've even heard of from the goat farm some people who go and get these goats from the streets. You know how those goats on the streets look mm -hmm. so nice. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. They look very healthy yeah, of course, yeah. and you admire them yeah. so much. I love watching and them. They're <laughs> tough. They're tough. They're tough. Then the mm -hmm. dust beans yeah. eating, you know? They see them eating plastic, plastic. they do um, they eat everything. No. At every training center in Africa and Uganda, you see them. They're the best looking goats you'll see yeah, the on best. the street. They, but, they're street tough and wise. But they take them to your farm. They then they want them. Yeah, they're going to die. Oh my God. They it's will start dropping like raindrops. Yeah. It's a disaster. So yeah. most people have really bought from the streets. Go to these <laughs> markets, local markets, yeah. on market days. They don't know. And get these goats. You yeah. don't know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. You don't know why someone is selling them off. Yeah. Then you take them for breeding. Mm -hmm. Or you add them to your flock for those who really have very good goats and you want to, you know, add up your numbers and you feel like, oh, let me just go to the market and it's mm -hmm. very quite cheaper. Yeah. These are local yes. breeders here. These are people yeah. who have been breeding goats. That's for why we always tell you guys the most expensive is cheap. Yeah, cheap. When you, and again, there's nothing wrong with being frugal, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to you getting parenting stock, there's a reason yeah. it costs more money than just meat, you know, meat products, right? Meat products, yeah, yeah. True. So, Jules Akins is saying, much love from Atlanta, USA. Atlanta, Brother, you ATL. Are doing a great job. Thank you. What's, what's is his, his name? Is Joe? Joss. Joss? Akin. Joss? Or let me Joss. See. I don't see it. Akins. He's saying, I give you a lot of respect. For your courage. It's Jose yeah. Aiken, Aikens, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You broke the barrier of the fear of many Africans have made good conclusion. Yes, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing the knowledge. Keep it up. Thank you. Please, can you refer me a vet in Kenya? Another question. Is, I can actually. Can I? Give I can refer you a vet in Kenya. His name is Dr. Nicholas. Okay. You message us at wevaluefarming626 at gmail.com, right? Yeah. I will put you in touch with Dr. Nicholas, and he will find you another young vet, because that's what he did with us. He, he literally, um, he had us hire the vet that was in training with him in his rotation yeah. for more than three years, and this guy has come to the farm. He's done a phenomenal job for us. And Dr. Nicholas in Kenya is the best. He's been so good. Even the farms that we visited. Yeah, he's a, he's a legend. He was respected. He's a legend. He was Everybody respected. loves Dr. Yeah, Nicholas. They yeah. love him. He's a very down-to-earth person yeah. and does his job. Yeah. Goes back to his home. Huh? 
I'm very busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very busy gentleman. I'm very kind. He was also saying another question is can I get a savanna and go a hundred percent in Kenya or from your farm? You can find I think you it'll be easier for you to find boas here in Uganda and savannas, but they also exist in Kenya. Some farmers have them as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's some breeders in Kenya that have some good boas as well. But if you want us to import for you, yeah. As well. Well when I go to South Africa, mm. you're gonna just send, you know, email us, right? Because when I head to South Africa, I'm gonna go there specifically to network and meet with specific breeders, Kalahari red breeders, yeah. savannah breeders, as well as pure boa goats. And guys, let me just tell you guys this. When it comes to boa goats, there are many different types of boas. There are boas that look like, um, you know, dapple, like meaning they have different color patterns. They have yeah. the brown circles, even the black circles black. on them. Mm-hmm. And some of them are fawn colors. Some of them are also... You know, they have the black heads, right? Some of them are just pure red, like the Kalahari reds. There's even the blackberry now. Yeah. It's a it's a boa, but it's they call boa. it a blackberry. Mm-hmm. It's just a pure black goat. But if you look okay, at the that. physical da- characteristic, you can see it's a boa. Yeah, true. Same size as a boa. It just happens to be black. <laughs> yeah, true. You know? So but you bring it to Uganda somewhere to even think it's just it's a, a local. From, it's a local. It's a local. <laughs> so it will be so hard to convince you, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is a boy. Yeah, yeah, but the like, genetics, the, the, the genetics, the genetics don't lie. Though. Yeah, that is true. Anthony, by the way, because he was the one who said it, that he had failed at his farm, he said times. I think you said it all poor genetics mm-hmm. and feeding process because sometimes he doesn't he don't oh. give them water and food from his findings. Please, how do I get good genetics from your farm to Nigeria? Well, you don't even have to come to our farm, my brother. You the you can definitely reach out. In fact, Nigeria as a country, mm. it, um, what what other countries are close to Nigeria? Ghana, there is a... Go to Ghana too. Actually, yeah, you can get some great genetics from Ghana. Mm. Actually, there's a... Well, I don't know the Ghanaian farmer, but on her channel, she's featured many this one particular breeder, this pig breeder, um, he, the guy was a nurse that, con- that that decided to get into pig farming and he's made it big. Mm. He actually has real genetics at his farm. And Ghana's very close to Nigeria. Um, there are other countries that take, I know like countries in the West, yeah. like Zimbabwe, um, and some of the other countries that actually have really good breeds. Mm. But you can either also import from South Africa if you feel more comfortable with more that. Comfortable. You know? Yeah. Zimbabwe is in the south or the no, west? No, no, it's in the south. In the south, yeah. Zimbabwe is in the south, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the reason I mentioned Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. let me tell you, the Zimbabwe government, though they have the issues, mm-hmm. they have the best genetics in Zimbabwe. You know how in this country we actually have the, um, the government imports but then there's some breakdowns Mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe, Mm -hmm. Tina. Mm -hmm. They have everything from Durox to Tamworth to all the best breeds. That's just readily available in Zimbabwe. Same thing in Zambia too. It blew my mind. So I always give Zimbabwe credit for that. So I know it's not exactly close to you, but you know, they have great breeds. But I know in Ghana, you can find really good, good genetics good in terms genetics of pigs. There, yeah. right. And there's even farmers in, in Nigeria that also have great genetics as well. Mm. Yeah. I've seen them on, on yeah. YouTube. Mm-hmm. Imara, Imara is saying, thank you for taking time to answer questions. Must be late now in Uganda. Yes, uh, one twenty-four in the morning. We sacrifice for you guys. Sacrifice. The sacrifice is Hard real. Work. Yes. So for those who have been complaining that we don't give you time. Huh? Well, let me also answer Cynthia. Mm. Um, Cynthia, yes, pig feeds can definitely be expensive, but that's also the reason why we also always tell you guys before you get into pig farming. You need to figure out where your feeds are going to come from. You need to grow your feeds first before you go out and start stocking your pig farm. That's true. 
can also say, oh, there's a lot of corruption from that. Oh my God, hope we don't have such in South Africa. Actually, it's different in South Africa. Mm. You know, they actually take farming, particularly genetic farming when you know this is very seriously and the uh, rules and regulations and essay is very different than here in east africa yeah so mm -hmm. someone is saying os is called os 92 mm -hmm. good evening till and grafton you guys really inspire me to love <laughs> the gambia gambia in the house i went to the gambia I would love like to. Her. I don't know anybody in Gambia. that I used to follow, uh -huh. she used to feature so much about the Gambia, and it was really a very beautiful country. Yeah, it, it seems like a really beautiful country. country. I also watched a YouTuber there mm -hmm. called Gano Did It. He's really good. Mm -hmm. He does really, really great interviews. Um, but from what I see in the Gambia, it's a beautiful country. You know, I love the ocean. I love fishing. Yeah. So I would love to go to game. I just don't know anybody. The game. That is true. Cynthia yeah. is saying, please come to South Africa, guys. Please. I'm coming to South Africa, Cynthia. You should you should message me, mm. and maybe you should join me, right? When I'm going to visit some of these farms in South Africa. Yeah. You know, definitely visiting some of these breeders for goats, mm. and I'm hoping to go meet with some of the guys over at PIC or yeah. even then breed while I'm in South Africa. That is yeah, true. so email us. Maybe we can get, uh, we can meet up and you can join our group when we're there and we can go visit some of these farms. Yeah, we'll take them around. Yeah. Show them the farms. Right? Yeah, help us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone is saying, Hadi is saying, Ghana, they can contact trade farming in Africa. Yeah, for the goats, you can definitely. Yeah, them. yeah, you can definitely reach out to Fred. Fred. Yeah. We always recommend people who will ask to go to Fred. Mm -hmm. So I definitely know he gets so many calls from people. I'm supposed well, in fact when I go to South Africa, hopefully mm -hmm. I'm supposed to meet up with Fred there also. Yeah. Exactly. And we're supposed to just traverse the country together. Yeah. So hopefully we can you know his visa yeah. goes through and we can go together. Imar is saying thank you for the sacrifice guys. We appreciate enjoy what I enjoy watching you guys. Thank you. Wow you guys always on point. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, you Anthony. As well. How much did it take you to build your dam? That dam, we went so overboard. That dam could have been built for five thousand, for four or five thousand dollars. Mm. But the issue, we had a very crooked, um, you know, fake broker yeah. that pretended to be an, an owner operator. So it, it, we went into our contingency budget there. But I will tell you guys this, though we paid around maybe like 5K for that dam, it can hold up to 5.3 million liters of water. Yeah. It was the best investment we made at the farm. True. With bond, hands down, best that investment. True. Best investment was having that dam because where we are, Good, when expensive. everybody runs out of water, we can go a year with no rains. And we still have we water. still have water. So we don't worry about water. So it's one of those things like insurance, right? You never think about insurance until the worst happens. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it was painful yeah. paying that kind of money to, to so dig painful. that dam. However, now, you know, it's paid us back many, many times over because when our neighbors don't have water to feed their cows and they don't have water to feed their, you know, to, to, to give, you know, to, to water their gardens, we don't have that issue. True. Our pigs drink all the water they can. All the time. And um, we also use that water for irrigation, and we never have to worry about running out of water. So it was a worthy investment, in my humble opinion. Yeah. And for those who always reach out to us that they want the contract, the people who did for us the that down uh -huh. we don't recommend them yeah we all can't the time. it's so hard to find good people reputable people some of you may think we are just selfish that we're we not want, but we just don't want you to go through all the trouble that we went through a lot of these guys are just not reputable people exactly and we can't just refer just anyone exactly so, so. there are some things that you guys always ask oh who constructed you this and that but with the experience that we've Even when you tell these people, even some people are like, no, this contractor was a thief. 
okay, give me the number anyway. I'm like, no, you're not going to get that number from me. I'm sorry. I mm. can't. Because we don't want you to go through all the bad experience, especially for the dam. I remember the fighting. Huh? The so things you don't crazy. see behind the scenes. Though it was really dark, but it was struggle, you know, to have it, to be there. But at least we thank God it's really helped us so, so much mm -hmm. with the water reservation. Do you intend to travel? When do you intend to travel to South Africa? Within the next two weeks. I hope to be in South Africa. Kenya fight. Within the next three weeks, I hope yes. to be in South Africa. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, I will message you guys and you come to my little farm. What is Cynthia? Yeah, it's fine. Cynthia, what do you have exactly at the farm? We could definitely know what you have at the farm so that we can plan accordingly. You can plan accordingly. Prosper is saying, I don't recall ever seeing the dam. Had you guys recently built it? I no. heard that you let the local use it but never shown it. If you watch our video feature on Water Myers channel, the dam is featured the dam there. Is there. Then also our first videos. Yeah, it's there. there. Yeah, uh -huh. that dam, that the dam in fact was built even before our fencing was done. Before it was among the first. The, one of the first things we did. That we did before even animals coming yeah. into yeah. the park. We prepared. So we prepared because water getting water in that village was really very difficult. So we made sure at least we had water before the animals came in. Even the pigs, when they came in, we had the, we had, we had the, what is that called, the well? Uh -huh. It's a bore hole. Boho. Yes, we had a bore hole that we used first in the first structures. Then we upgraded them. When we got this other building right here. They were drinking in Nipo. Yeah, straight. they were drinking straight from the, the Nipos. Yeah. From the tank that we, we have. Reserve the tank. So we pump from the dam to the reserve tank. Then it was gravity fed through the nipple drinkers yeah so that dam has been there really from the first days of the farm so if you've not seen it go and watch the first first videos you'll definitely see it and even when they're constructing it i featured it yeah. as well when by, by, by the way guys when we say like when our neighbors ran out of water it's not even about them coming to the dam we actually have ball holes at the farm where we have like clean water that yeah, people they don't can drink, drink from straight that dam. We don't give water to people to drink in the in the village from the dam. We give them water that looked like this. So even if you bottle it up, it'll look something like this yeah. from our borehole. So that's why we give to the folks there. But you can see the dam on Water Mind's video because yeah. he actually had the drone. The drone right yeah. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we also have a borehole with very clean water for drinking, even for the staff, for cooking, for the boats as well, you know. We give it to them. True. Yeah, William is saying, how can the culture be changed so that bad hires and I think you know is... I we have a we have ninety percent ninety eight percent of our staff are Ugandan folks. I think it's a matter of finding the right people, and if you have, and usually let me give you guys an example. We hired two guys to come to be to dig at the farm. These are the guys who work in the fields. They're the ones that plant the pastures for the goats and also food for the staff. The staff yeah. They were only supposed to be there for like a month. But these guys came and worked so hard. <laughs> they worked themselves into a job at Value Farm, right? Mm -hmm. And then you tend to find people who have that kind of work ethic. Yeah. They know people from their village that would also come with a similar mindset, True. right? So, but even still, people will surprise you. Some of your favorite employees that you may personally like will may turn out to be the laziest people at your farm, maybe the ones who will be stealing from you the most. So it's a crapshoot, right? But, you know, it's you're going to have to go through multiple hires to find the right people. And it's not just an African thing. I keep saying that because it's true. It's the same thing, whether you're in the U.S. or wherever. Mm. Sometimes you may have to go through multiple employees before you find the right fit. That is so true. Yeah. So finding people to really to be at the farm, sometimes it's a gamble in the beginning yeah. if you're a beginner farmer. Cause Especially if they think you don't know anything. And exactly. When they realize that, oh, maybe she's relying on us. Mm -hmm. And if you really show to them that you know, 
they are the ones who are making decisions they're the ones who are doing stuff for the farm they will take it, they will play you properly so it is just a gamble especially at the beginning till you get the right people who are going to work for you of course in the but even after that, you get the right people it's your job to educate yourself true. it's your job to learn about your protocol it's your you should be able to pick up you know any animal at the farm you know like even the other like late last week mm. we we're at the farm we we're in the goat section and tina and i were looking at these goats and some of them you know, like look at the way the fur look on this one here mm. you know this one has some sort of have uh, deficiency yeah either needs to be given some additional vitamin boosters when was the last time it was dewormed and so you it's up to you to learn your trade craft you know, if you don't learn it, then you're going to be so easy to manipulate. And most of these managers, a lot of these guys that are from the bush, mm. that have a second or third grade education, some of them, right? When it comes to dealing with animals, they have their PhDs. And if you don't know what you're doing, they're going to rob you blind. These are the people that will rob you blind because they know you don't know. And you're going to accept whatever they tell you. They tell you. And so that's why you have to educate yourself, spend money, you know, get yourself a couple of consultations, mm -hmm. you know, take notes, you know, watch videos, study. And so that when you speak to them, you can speak to them about your animals intelligently mm -hmm. so that they don't try to get over on you. I remember the, the, the first days when you was an American mm -hmm. on the farm. So most oh, people... They, oh, well, <laughs> Tell them the story about how when we go to buy goats. Go ahead, please. When they saw me. When they see. Oh, go ahead. Just, just give them the whole breakdown. What what they would say in the local language yeah, yeah, yeah. when it's time for, for me to select the goats. The selecting. The you have the floor, the partner. Goats. Go. Yeah, I remember we, we've gone to so many farms, mm -hmm. especially in the beginnings. And they, they play a trick on you. Mm -hmm. When you first go, they're like, oh, it's this price if we pick for you. But it's another price if you pick for yourself. for yourself. Please break it down. But I remember when you used to go there. Uh huh. You being an American. Uh huh. Hmm? Yeah. He doesn't know how to. He doesn't know this goat. <laughs> he doesn't know these things. <laughs> Let's leave him to first select. Let him select. Let him select <laughs> this goat for himself because he's American. He doesn't but know what does he know? What does he know? Yeah. Huh? So, when they realize. Grafton would start picking. <laughs> he would play stupid at first in the beginning. Uh, like I'm picking. clueless. Yes, as if oh, I would ask the this? dumbest question. What kind, what kind of good is this? Like, what does it look like that? Right? Yeah, so then they can Ah, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything at mm -hmm. all. So then Grafton gets into his game. <laughs> Of selecting the real goods. Oh my god. This ladies, I remember one time. <laughs> They were talking among uh -huh. themselves, like, this guy here, they know the, this goat, how does he know to select the best goats that they have here? Then they took us aside uh -huh. and they're like, is he from here? <laughs> <laughs> is he Uganda? <laughs> how can he get to know all the best goats here? Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, he's a farmer. Yep. But still, in the beginning, most people, like for the workers, they're always remember, underestimate. Yeah, they really underestimated how you are yeah. with everything uh -huh. that you are doing at the farm. They thought maybe you don't know how yeah. things are being done yeah. here yeah. and with the traditional ways of mm -hmm. how things are done in Uganda. So they thought you're not really capable about that. Uh -huh. Yet you're the very person who told everyone <laughs> what to do yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. So, so those are some of the challenges that are actually there. Yes, sir. Yeah. So for me, I, I, it's the same thing. That's why I tell you guys, you know, it's your responsibility to educate yourself. Educate yourself. Because yeah. when you educate yourself, it's going to be really, really easy for you to earn mm -hmm. the respect of your the workers. Of your workers. And they won't try to take advantage of your lack of knowledge. And they didn't take... Because they were almost taking advantage of mm -hmm. each and everything that you were doing. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, that. Ah, Tamanyi. Tamanyi means he doesn't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. So, but you prove them wrong, of course. Yeah, you gotta have to Nicole yourself. is saying, Noel is saying, I so appreciate you for being New York. Because New York. you speak up with your full chest. Frank and honest. Thank I you. I, I, that's how I know how to be. 
<laughs> straight up. I can't. New York people are straight up. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not joking, not meeting. We, we don't care about you if don't, you get... You don't care about, about your feelings. People's feelings. Yeah. Why? Because we have to keep it real. Sometimes, no, love tone. No. You know what it is? It's, you have to be respectful. There's a difference between being blunt and being a jerk. Not they are more blunt. Yeah, we're very blunt people. And and people in Uganda are not used to that. We are not used to that. They're not used to that. And that's like one of my biggest pet peeves about Ugandans. Mm -hmm. They will never tell you the story straight. <laughs> <laughs> we try to be polite. No, 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 no. With Ugandans... Call it politeness. Tell, no, no we, we love... Tina, we don't it. want to hurt people's feelings. It's not about so, hurting. So we try our best, even if the situation is really so terrible, <laughs> so bad, we try to make the situation calm, then we bring it in a polite way. But New Yorkers, so no, tell you, I'm not a rude person. You're not rude, but black. But I'm gonna tell you how it is. I will tell you how it is. You'll know the time it is, because I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. But that's. But, but we're not used to that. But I like dealing with people who are straight up and honest. Yeah, true. Like that's like the easiest way to work with me. Just be real. Just keep it real. And a lot of the, the our colleagues here, if they have to ask you for something, <laughs> they're gonna go around the corner, over the fence, cross the river, and then you're like, "What are you asking oh, me? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about?" They'll never just come out and say, hey, I actually, uh, have a problem. I'm having this an is issue. This. I need my wife is threatening to leave me. I need to send some money home. Some We're money. behind on some of the bills. Can I get an advance, please? They'll mm -hmm. never do it. They'll give you the story and the story within the story. But mm -hmm. no, nah, I can't. Yeah. But those are like, guys, let me tell you, my favorite things to do even now is when we go visit other farms to make purchases i like to be the one selecting the animals mm -hmm. because they always underestimate your brother from new york yeah they do that they always they always like oh yeah yeah you can select you want to pick and i would literally be like but but why does this goat look like that mm -hmm. why is it that color mm -hmm. what percentage do you think this goat is and they're like oh this guy don't know anything he doesn't know and then before you know it if you. they have if they have pure goats amongst the herd and they don't think I'm supposed to know, mm. I pick the best of the best. Mm. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes, sometimes ah, this one, one. <laughs> you, can't, you can't take this you can't one. Take this one. Ah, they're like, ah, you you're taking, you, so you're taking all. Mm. In fact, we're gonna have to take a few back. I'm like, nope. I made my selection. That is true. That's like my that's one of my favorite things to do. And we make fun about it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, honey saying, how well how well are you doing with the apiary? Is it a lucrative business? Actually, we're about to be expanding on that soon. Yeah. Um, we'll be harvesting some honey within the next few weeks when the rains kind of you know slow down a little bit. Yeah. We'll definitely feature that. Tina's gonna have the bee suit. You're gonna have the honey extractor too. I'm just gonna be behind the camera. With mass man, and <laughs> you're gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna do it. You really forced me to do that. Oh, I'm gonna do it. come on! You're a soldier. You're, I'm a, you're soldier. a beast. I'm going yeah. To do I'm going to. I'm going you're, to have this. You're a warrior. You see, like, when that it comes to truth. that. What has happened to your life? I think it had buffered a little bit. Guys, let me tell you something. What with the bees? I'm going to embarrass. You. How? I'm not embarrassed. You grabbed one. With the bees. He's so scared. I'm not scared. Of this I'm piece. not. Yeah, you know why? Hello, because it's always... You know what? In America, you learn about the African killer bees. <laughs> so, no. I have to defend myself. Just like I'm not... There's no shame. You think I'm ashamed? Do you think I'm ashamed? Let me tell you, be strong. Well, I am strong. I'm strong. I smack them hard. When they come... Wow! <laughs> I have to protect my face, my neck. Let me tell you, these are African killer bees out here in these streets. Uh -huh. I'm not gonna take a chance to get stung and get swarmed. Oh no! But with bees, you have to be calm. 
Yeah, that's why you're gonna be in the suit. It's you okay. You calm. You don't have to, you know, react and all that. <laughs> but Grafton will always be swinging his hands everywhere. I can't. Means. It I can't, can't handle. It can't handle. But I'm going to do that. Then Duva, what is that? That name? Haley. He's saying diaspora can find honest, hardworking, serious-minded. Conti. What is that? African to do business with. And they are also honest, hardworking. Two or more families can become millionaires. Okay. That's true. For sure. That's true. No, they are great people here. Yeah, we we true. have some. We have a lot of people that work for us mm. that are tremendous. But we have to go through a lot before yeah. we met the quality of people we have that now. we have right now. Yeah, we yeah. went through a lot, guys. We went through a lot. People quitting huh? after getting a salary. Some people just That's waking up and disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 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 one, the ones you you want to make sure they work. There's some of these guys. Look, guys, I've seen it all. Remember this one I was faking sickness with the shivering? <laughs> <laughs> some of these guys will try anything. anything. This one dude was shivering like a leaf for three days. <laughs> Come to find out he was just faking. Faking it. You know? And then when we when he got confronted, the shivering stopped. Experience should stop that. <laughs> and he got his money, he went home. Yeah. What about the one who would just escape and say that I just found myself at home? <laughs> <laughs> that was our Sarah. <laughs> Every time this guy gets paid, he would just And he was disappear. a good worker. Yeah. One of our best workers. He would just disappear, go back to Masendi. And I thought, why do you always leave? He's like, you know, I get my money, I just wake up in Masendi. I don't know. <laughs> I don't Please know. Please forgive me. And yeah. he's a very person who would call us. Yeah, a hundred times. I want to come back. Like, uh, no. What is the problem? Why do you always go? It's like, I just find myself home. I don't know what happens. Then you really imagine what kind of person that person is. So, Cynthia from mm -hmm. South Africa is saying she has... Pigs, goats, sheep, rabbits, and wow. pre chickens. All in a small it. scale. Nice. I'm hoping to grow, but pigs are multiplying very fast. No. Pigs do that. Yeah, they do that. And she, believe me, they like the bride in South Africa. Exactly. They love to bride in South Africa. Yeah. So she's going to do okay. Yeah. So, honey, 75 is saying, I said, call Nicole. I really appreciate your hard work, your transparency, true inspiration. May you stay blessed. Thank you so much. Thank Haley you. is saying, I hope one day find good people to do business with when I'm ready to do to go to the motherland. Nice. Yeah, I'm sure you will. You, will you just it. have to take your time. That's all. Yeah. But you know, we've been here for two hours, my friend. Yeah, we, we are now concluding. Yeah. Okay, so since they're saying, Oh, are you an American? Wow, interesting. Yes, of course. Mm. But what kind, what inspired you to come to do business in Uganda? You are not a job on date. Well, that's a really great question. I've shared this many times before, but I'll give you guys a quick version. Mm. Prior to coming to Uganda, I considered going to uh, Panama. I considered going to Portugal. Like many expats out there, I was ready to leave the hustle and bustle of New York City and just that whole life, I wanted to leave it behind. Um, I always tell people I'm a reformed banker turned farmer, um, fully rehab, rehab, you know, uh, into this world, this lifestyle. Um, I turned in my really, really nice and expensive suits for uh, gum boots and comfy clothing at the farm. Uh, I when I researched many of the other countries I could have gone to places like again Belize, Panama, um, even considered going to um, Ecuador or Peru to build an avocado farm and ultimately goats and ducks. I always it always kept on coming back and, and on to the not in the back of my mind but to the front of my at the forefront that I wanted to go someplace where I can have a positive impact, where I can make a difference, where my experience in the diaspora, I feel, could be a, catal a catalyst 
to not only help myself, but also help the team that I was going to be working with. And not to mention the environment in Uganda was perfect, and particularly in farming. Listen, is Uganda a perfect country? Not by any stretch of the imagination, but it was perfect for me and my partner for what we wanted to do. You know, this is the same thing, right? If you're in the U.S. and you start causing trouble, making threats to the to the leader of the free world, they're gonna come for you. You understand? Mm -hmm. But here in Uganda, as long as you mind your business, you do what you're, you supposed, do what to you're do, supposed to do. People don't mind. They don't care. They just you. You just you do you. Okay. And so when I looked at the landscape, when I looked at the climate, when I looked at the overall price of um, land acquisition here, it made sense. Um, I also really took a very hard look at going to Ghana, uh, but faith wanted me to be here in UG. So that's where we are. But I gotta tell you, we've been to so many different places. If I had to choose any other country to go, to start over, I would still pick Uganda over mm -hmm. wherever else. As much as I love Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, all these places, I think Uganda for agriculture, to me, although I I admire Zimbabwe with great reverence mm -hmm. for what they have in Zimbabwe, right? Yeah. I guess they were the breadbasket of the yeah, South, right? True. We're the breadbasket of the East, the East. Mm -hmm. they're the breadbasket of the South. Mm -hmm. I would still want to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I know your story will come very soon in detail. <laughs> your movement to the continent and what you've done so far. Yeah. We shall definitely bring that episode for you guys. But guys, we really appreciate you guys so much. I love the consistency. Brofton, bravo oh for the consistency. Eh? For the live stream, for always saying, yes, we are doing the live stream. <laughs> Even when someone is being a little lazy but at least i'm so proud that we are always here to share with you guys guys let can. me tell you this like even today i was so tired when tina hit me up i think you reached out and was like are we still doing the live stream this was not even yesterday i was exhausted i had like the longest day yesterday mm -hmm. and then she asked me around like 7 p.m are we doing the live stream? i was like oh yes we are and today, I just wanted to be sleeping. Do you know what time I slept last night? Uh, 4 a.m. this morning. This morning yeah. at 5. Yeah. 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 Um, I had calls the whole day. Mm. But you know something? You got to give the people what they want, though. Yeah. So You know? we've been okay. The idea is to commit to the live stream. Although you guys should buy Tina coffee. Because she works very hard, you know, to make sure that all the thumbnails are done, the Did chief you? farmer, the chief editor, <laughs> all the hats, you know, <laughs> while we do on YouTube, you yeah. know, so you guys should definitely buy Tina some coffee. Social media the, manager ah, with she, all the insults on she, TikTok. Oh my yeah. God, people come for you. <laughs> yeah, so you guys should definitely uh, to get Tina some coffee, you know, yeah. super chat. Through memberships. Yeah, become a member, yes, buy some member. merch. Buy some merch in the U.S. and take, take some pics you know and what? send it to us. I was thinking mm -hmm. for our members, we should give them, we should do a giveaway for our members for some consultation, free consultation for 30 minutes or something like that. Actually, that's a good idea. Yes. Like, so I think member, we discuss if you like a silver or higher, Yeah. you can definitely get a free consult. Consultation for yeah. that. We see how we can yeah. help our That's actually member. a good idea. Yeah. That is how we're going to do it as well. You get to talk to Tina one-on-one. One-on-one. Oof. And if you're in Uganda, Kampala, we can meet. We have coffee. We can, yes. Yeah. And we... Tina's the best to hang out with. Because I... Tina knows everywhere. Tina is a true GPS. Am I wrong? I've been raised in Kampala, so I know Kampala mm. properly. Tina knows everywhere. <laughs> I That's often it. ask myself, mm -hmm. sometimes when we used to have another friend that used to help us drive around, right? I used to often ask myself, how does such a lady like you understand the ways of Kampala the way that you do? Here, Tina online. knows every street, every back street. You're stuck in traffic wherever you're going. 
And this woman has a photographic memory when it comes to directions. I've never seen such a thing. Like, if Tina goes somewhere once, I don't forget. She remembers it. Yeah. Me, I'm the opposite. <laughs> There's Thank no shame. You. Thank you. But if I'm paying attention. Yeah, to detail, you are. You don't forget things. Thank you. But direction. No, but if I'm paying attention. Worst. If I'm paying attention. The worst, yeah. yeah. But if I'm paying attention, I mm. can remember. Well, guys, thank you so much. Go check out our social media platforms as well. We have Value Farm UG on Instagram. We also have Facebook Value Farm, TikTok Value Farm. Go follow us as well. Thanks, Thanks Henry. See behind the scenes. What is Henry saying? Henry says, always good to see you both live from LA to New York. We love you both. We love you too. Thanks. Thank you so much. Mark Donald. You guys are awesome. Always privileged to watch and listen. Asante sana. Karibu sana. Oh, Karibu. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I speak my little Swahili. Karibu, Karibu. Yes, we appreciate you a lot because we keep learning. Thank you so much. How do you send coffee? How can I join member? To join membership when you go to our channel, you definitely see join. So the join button, that's where you click to become a member. Then you pick up. The, you pick up the what is that? You pick the membership level. You the membership be. level. I mean, you want yeah. So the join when you go to the channel itself, there is join. Right, right next to where the subscriber count is yeah. to the right. Join, boom, you're in there. You become a member. Then I don't know how we are going to do this. How we will identify our members? Of course, we shall definitely identify the members mm -hmm. for free consultation that will be beginning next month let's yeah. do it next month yeah. so we shall be providing at least consultation free consultations for you guys at least for a month to appreciate you guys so much because you guys have really supported us our mission here and yes we should also it's so it. crazy that we can't order our merch in our in uganda they don't ship here they don't can you imagine sad i'm so mad about that but when I go back to the U.S., I'm going to bring back all the value for merch. Mm, thank the you. The t-shirts, the bags, the mugs. Yeah, but for those in the U.S., I think even in Europe, you can definitely go to our shop so that you can get some. You can get some stuff, Some yeah. items from there to support value farm as well. And also to be proud. Proud member. Proud family mm. of value farm as well. You know, put on your hood, put on your... Get a cup, there are bags in there. I just love the mug. I, you know, I the, drink my coffee. I need a coffee mug. Yeah, t shirts. Two. Oh yeah. my god, there are caps there as well. It's a cap, my friend. Cap. Because we call it caps. Yeah. <laughs> the caps is Superman. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, that is British English. You are American English. <laughs> you guys are always making fun of us. <laughs> American English, we are. Mm. British I know. English. You always get me with that one. Exactly. But guys, we really appreciate you guys <laughs> so much. Thank you so much. That is, let us call it a night. And also, please watch out for a video that is coming up on Monday. Thank you so much for the love in the previous video. We have part two of that episode as well, so that you can learn so much. Because it's all about numbers and how you can make it as well. So, for those who have been asking, we want the numbers. How am I going to make money? How am I going to, you know... Be good at my farm. That video is right there for you on Monday. It's already edited. It's going to be uploaded for you. But we appreciate you guys so much. Subscribe. You know what? It's embarrassing. Majority of people who watch our videos are not subscribed <laughs> to our channel. Guys, why? It's human nature. Please subscribe. People don't want Please to be subscribe. bothered with all the emails. and. No, it's not emails. You just... Subscribe, it's free, then notification. That is it. Notified. Value Farm is having a video. Yeah, but That's we it. always bring you guys good info. Mm -hmm. So you should subscribe. Exactly. So subscribe, it's free. They're not going to charge you. And even there's a share button right there. When you're sharing to your friends on WhatsApp, yeah, to That's your groups as well. Point. It's also a good thing for you to share knowledge. Do not be selfish, guys, with all this knowledge. Because we bring it the way it is. At least you guys have appreciated that we are being transparent. That is who we are to Value Farm. We try our best to make sure that you get it the way it is. There's some comment I got from TikTok that really Which one? annoyed me. Yeah, Which that, one? 
I wasn't happy about. Ah. Uh, Someone was like, uh, they think you're a pretend farmer. <laughs> oh, come on. Anybody who watched us know, mm. like, how hard you work. No, that was someone's comment about house. I think I'm just privileged. Someone just woke up and gave me a farm. So I'm pretending no, to be please. a farmer. I was like, hey. You've been there since day zero. That's I someone like, who's clearly ah. uninformed. But you have to pray for people like that. You can't take that personal. Then people who said, some of us farmers are just motivation speakers. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they don't they don't see the oh, long journeys do. and how hard we work people don't see the behind the they scenes the see, time yeah. we wake up in the morning the time the sacrifices we, get back we make in the house you understand how exhausting exhausting it you is. go the whole day without even eating sometimes yeah because you gotta look after the animals yeah yeah people it's, don't it's see real all that it's real they just see rise and shine <laughs> And that is it. People don't really see that those other things that we go through, huh? the mm -hmm. annoying stuff. But we shall definitely also bring for them so that they can see a sneak peek of what we go through you in know, a day. You know what it is, though. I think, I think, for a lot of for a great deal of people, mm -hmm. they see a person like you, right? I mean, they don't see a farmer, yeah, right. And like it's hard for them to to Believe. to 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 make that connection. But no, Tina is as real as they get, you know? Even me, like these guys know I have a banking background, but then I am a nerd. I am so immersed in the world of farming. Mm -hmm. Like, really, I read everything. I'm not too proud to ask for help. I, I watch, I research. Yeah, I'm usually the always... person who's on the cutting edge of what's happening. I read so many research papers. True. Um, I even have stuff on my laptop about like genetics and how you can come up with your own breed of, of animals by crossbreeding and getting the results that you want. You know, like I just love yeah, what I do. Yeah, yeah I love, and it's not even a chore for me. Like I, if I'm home on a day on my day off, I can seriously read like three or four published papers and watch like two or three documentaries about farming. Even about stuff that we're not doing. That is true. That it just interests me. So that's what I do. But you know what? Mm -hmm. It's surprising how some people think that we have a lot of time to just... Whew. Our days, I think this is the free time that we have. This is like, it. The, we the, sacrifice it, sleep. Sacrifice sleep mm -hmm. to do something. Yeah. But some people may think, oh, she's just giving us excuses. Mm. She's not just responding because... She's claiming to be busy, but as a farmer, you have to work harder, by the way. That is another thing that you have, have to work. Know. Yeah. But guys, let's have a good night. Asante sana. Murareche. Musule bulunji. What do you have to say? Nothing. Good night. Au revoir. All right. Good night, guys. Till next time. The Bye. video on Monday. And also the next live stream. Bye, guys.